What's happening, weirdos? Happy, happy new year. Happy 2023. What a great way for us to start off the year with an incredible, fun, delightful conversation with the incredible, funny, and delightful Otsko Okatska. Otsko is amazing. She currently has a special, which is awesome. It's on, it's called The Intruder. It is on HBO Max. You got to check it out. She is one of the most unique, interesting, and funny people I've met and talked to and had the pleasure of watching live in recent memory, and I'm so glad that she sat down to make it weird. If you guys are uh, (laughs) stand-up, if you guys are stand-up comedy fans, and you'd like to see me do stand-up comedy, why not come uh, to a show, to a live show? The next Largo is, uh, go to largo-la.com. There's always a Largo show happening. The next one, I believe, yep, is on January 10th. There'll be one in February as well. Just go to Largo-LA.com if you'd like to come to that. If you don't live in the Los Angeles area and you'd like to see me, I am going to be next in San Francisco on January 12th, followed by Portland, Seattle, Atlanta, Charlotte, and Washington, D.C. We are going to be adding a bunch more tour dates. I love this new hour. I'm loving taking it on the road. Always means so much if weirdos are there. Links to all of those are at PeteHolmes.com. Super simple super easy. Also, we only have one Pete's pick here up top, and it's one of my absolute favorites. If you're watching the video, I'm pointing to it right now, is the Apollo Neuro. And if you're like me, the holidays can be stressful. I'm one of those people that gets a little bit overwhelmed with all of the people, all the presents, all the planning, all the parties, and I have been swearing and leaning on my Apollo Neuro even more than I normally do. For those of you that know, don't know, it's not a watch. People often think it's a watch. Uh, Val wears hers on her ankle. I wear mine on the inside of my wrist. Apollo Neuro is a piece of wearable tech that delivers soothing, gentle vibrations that are interpreted by your nervous system basically as a hug. It's basically touch therapy that you wear. You barely notice it. In fact, you can set it so low that you definitely won't notice it, but your nervous system responds. Basically, if I can feel this, I must be safe. And it is like wearing a hug. It's like wearing something that can energize you. Often in the late afternoon, after I pick Leela up from school, I am dragging, but I don't want to drink coffee because it stays in my system and makes it impossible to sleep. Energy and wake up is a setting on the Apollo that I don't talk about a lot. I usually just mention that it's great for during workouts, which it is, but it's also great when you're just craving espresso, but maybe you don't want to drink more coffee. You put it on energy and wake up and you start to feel it getting into your body, getting into your heartbeat and adrenalizing you. It is incredible and an incredible tool for parents and also just people that need to avoid that mid-afternoon crash. Similarly, for the holidays, we had a lot of people over. I had it rocking on social and open. I had it on clear and focused when I was doing this podcast. Rebuild and recover is awesome for after workouts or just stressful situations like for me. After everybody leaves the party, put on rebuild and recover. Feel more safe, more in control because of this wearable hug for my nervous system. Relax and unwind is awesome for during flights or at night when you're watching a movie and you just want to kind of pre, pre, pre get ready for bed. Really helps start lulling your nervous system into that feeling of security that is awesome for deep, restful sleep. And also when I get in bed, I put it on sleep and renew, which as I always mention, is a real game changer. Not only does it help you fall asleep, but if you get up in the middle of the night, you can just push the buttons on the Apollo and it'll rerun the program. So if you're having a hard time, like I do sometimes, 3 a.m., you wake up, you start thinking about the next day, you start getting all distracted, just hit the Apollo, it's got you. It's gonna literally lull you back to sleep, tell your body in a language it can understand, you're safe, everything's okay, let's go to sleep. Or you're safe, everything's okay, let's create some energy. Or you're safe, everything's okay, let's meditate. There's also a meditation setting, which I absolutely love. I always mention it's not woo-woo, this is not sold in crystal shops. It was developed by a neuroscientist and a board-certified psychiatrist who have been studying the impacts of chronic stress for nearly 15 years, and Apollo's effects on stress, sleep, cognitive performance, and recovery have been proven in multiple clinical trials and real-world studies. And I'm saying for me and Val, we've had them now for years, 
I will turn around. If I've, I, I recently, I told this last time, I drove away from the house, realized I didn't have my Apollo. I was 10 minutes away. I turned back. It's, it's that good. It's 30 minutes good. I'll go back and get it because it's that important to my day. So give it a try. It's a great way to show your support of this podcast and it's a great gift you can give yourself and your nervous system. For 10% off, go to apolloneuro.com slash weird. That's A-P-O-L-L-O-N-E-U-R-O.com slash weird. You'll get 10% off and show your support of the show, which means so very much. All right, everybody. This is Otsko. Enjoy. Make sure to check out her special, The Intruder, and hope to see you out there on the road. Get into it. Do you want a magic mind? It, okay, I'm going to offer it. A magic mind. Okay. Here's why. Let's start with your hair. I'm just going to put this here. Oh, cool. Uh, um, hi. Hi. How do you feel? Because you, you, we're running a little later. Are you okay? Do you need a second to like acclimate? Oh, you know, this kind of raw energy is what I, Honestly? I ran on all my life. Can I be real? Yeah. I love it. <laughs> like I'm always looking at, like like with stand up, I'm always looking for a way in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now you have this. You were only ten minutes late, which, by the way, is that even late? Hey, but you know, hey. in this town, hey. that, I feel like that's finished a lot of careers, or I it don't could, think so. it could. No, no, nah, you're right. It depends if they already. People hated always you. wait. For, yeah, Say you're right. People always. No, people always wait for you know yeah. the star. <laughs> so, they, they, and not that I'm the star, but I'm just saying no. that's never been. If yes. the crew was late, maybe you're fired. I actually, I've heard some stories about people who uh, really come late, like four, yeah. five, six hours. Oh, late. yeah. Uh, it, the late. You say that when they're dead. James Gandolfini would sometimes come late, mm -hmm. like season six Sopranos. Yeah, like oh. biggest 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 show in the world right so he would understandably what i mean is i love the guy i'm not trying to talk shit he would show up late on a monday because he was off being james gandolfini yeah and the story i heard is that he would just hand people what like like tony soprano he'd just hand them like four hundred dollars like everybody on the crew wow he'd just have his assistant give him a brick of cash to be like sorry go around sorry sorry wow. sorry sorry and then everybody was like, and here I am. I didn't even get the money and I'm spreading uh, good PR. Wow. Yeah, the money part I hadn't heard. Yeah. You heard the other part. Just being late. You did? Yeah, but the, yeah, like, isn't, I think The Rock is notorious for being late. Really? Two shoots. Yeah, like yeah. three hours, Between you know. A rock and a late place. That uh -huh. was nothing. No, no, no. That hey. was nothing. We're just warming up. <laughs> Let's go. I want You're you to know. You're just gonna breeze past that. What do you mean between a the rock and a lake place? The fact that you just said that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Between a rock and a lake place. Look, it's the one to beat, is, like uh -huh. we like to say. No, yeah, gosh, I'm so not a puns person. I love, <laughs> I love it's when not even I a pun. I just replaced a word in a oh, thing. Yeah, it's not. It's it's below a pun. When you make a colloquialism up or something that's like that. That's yeah, what it is. yeah, 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 well, yeah. I can do that. Say what. Say what you're gonna say. No, the between <laughs> Mariah Carey showed up to her own show three hours late, just like two days ago. You mean to perform to sing songs? To perform. Were you yeah. there? No, no, no. But uh, friends of mine were, and friends. they were like, they were like, Are these look at here. You that love Mariah Carey secretly. Are they what? Oh, me. Are these friends you? Like, I mean, secretly? don't we don't we all love her? No. Yeah, you you don't. Yeah. She's, no. I think about her, I don't like it. this is the season to think about her. It's every that, December. Can I say? Mm -hmm. That's part of it. Be is there a performer that mm -hmm. I believe less when mm -hmm. they say all I want for Christmas is you? Yeah, you're right. Is, if Dolly Parton said it, I'd be like, maybe. But think of all the people <laughs> hearing the song, if Dolly Parton if, said well, it. Not even Dolly. She's too huge. Yeah, because, yeah, by now you're like, oh, you're just, you know, do you even, do you even feel the words? Do you even... Do you even, but I think about all the people hearing it for the first time. Yes. Or seeing it in the movie Love Actually. For the first time. Because <laughs> that's a movie I don't really like to go back and watch again. It doesn't age perfectly. I'm I'll like, say. oh, it was fine. I don't even, I just remember like the cards. Hey, yeah, yep. I love you. Which or even that doesn't age well. Yeah, that why? Dude, well, he kisses his best friend's girlfriend oh. his best friend's wife mm -mm. which i think in britain they're just like it's just a homeless christmas kiss <laughs> like it's different it really is just a little peck and he's yeah. like all right that's it so like that's not cool uh-huh cheating i also find Cheating's that it's so not today 
right? <laughs> I don't you mean because everybody's open and stuff, or do you just mean? No, I mean I thought you said it doesn't age well, as it in like age. in 2022. No, I agree. Gone, done. I also you know? think psychologically it's significant that she's dating a black guy and a white man is kind of going like I'm not trying to. Yeah, start no, some I've shit. always said love actually forward in their thinking. <laughs> No, I'm saying the opposite. I'm saying um, she's married a black guy, but there's like this white guy going like, what about oh, me? Oh, like, see, now you're reminding me about all the, yeah, I just, I just remember <laughs> the cards. I don't remember. I just Well, remember. I'm married to someone who, I, I don't want to say she makes me watch it every year, but okay, okay. I watch it every year. You do? And wow. I'm not saying anyone was consciously racist or even like hateful. I'm mm-hmm. just saying like, it's interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if that's... I'm the therapist of the movie Love Actually, I would say, if this is your dream, if yeah. the movie is the dream you're telling me about, I'd be like, it's kind of interesting that like the only black dude in the movie is kind of a, not. it's not a full cuckold, but it's like a guy that behind right. his back is yeah. this love story brewing that we're all kind of like, oh. Mm. Yeah, no, totally. Different totally. if you flop it around. Different combinations would feel different, is all I'm saying. No, for real. Right? Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's good to point out. Yeah. Is it? Or am I just white splaining? <laughs> no, I no, you remind me of the movie. So I'm like, yeah, that is like, I am love actually splaining. I'll do that love all day. Love actually splaining. I'll yeah. take you through So it's, that's what you watch every year. I Valerie, who loves you, by the way. Yeah, I and love I love Val. you. I'm yeah. just saying she's taking your dance classes, so she yes. has a whole other level right. of appreciation. Connection, for you. yeah. Yes, mm-hmm. I mean like a spiritual bond, and is so. I've I've seen you dance on stage a little bit, but she's like, you know, yeah, mirrored your moves and stuff, and she is completely in awe of you. People have a different connection to fitness instructors than comedians. You know. That is true. Mm-hmm. There's something like a like fitness a, instructors, leaders. You know, Sherpas. That's what I was gonna say. Yeah, Sherpas. you lead them over a mountain they don't think they can get through. Yes. and on the other side, they're. I'm gonna say something crazy. Why? I think they feel better than people that went to a comedy show. Even maybe, like if you get someone dancing and sweating real hard for 45 minutes. Sure, an hour, sure, sure. Yeah, I'd put that up against laughing really hard. I bet it's the same. I uh, yeah, I'm starting to you know, fitness instructor is going down for me, and comedy is really like I'm starting to think comedians. I take it back. Comedians are leaders too. Of course we are. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I think that we. I don't. I don't mean to really maybe, pull. I just realized we are recording this. Oh and I'm my like, gosh! Maybe I should be more. <laughs> oh, what more about more comedy? Shamed, no, more ashamed to say we're leaders, but <laughs> you're literally. A leader. We, You're we, leading a group in a certain direction. That's that's what. Have you whole... seen your comments and DMs? You know, hey, you brought me out of dark times. Come on. That's lovely. Right, like yeah, through sure. the pandemic, it was, and then I found you, or you said this one thing, right? Yeah, yeah, the pandemic, but yeah. The the <laughs> pandemic. <laughs> I like to try and get the guests to say pandemic. Yeah. During okay. the pandemic, you really Noted. helped me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When they say, you know, yeah, and fitness instructors get that too, but it's it's a little different. You know, it's about it's about self. Like, I don't know. Maybe it's similar. Either way, I'm I glad I. Somebody in a power position, meaning they're in front. I don't mean they're actually more powerful than anybody, but they've yes. been elected to go in front. Mm-hmm. And they're going to go like this of all of the many ways. It's kind of what we're doing right now. Yeah. Of all the many things you could think about, mm-hmm. you could be stagnant, you could be still, you could be serious, you could be silly. I'll be the thing you can model. Right. Because we go, all go through life mirroring and modeling and re- reflecting what's in front of us. So you go like, hey, I'll be something pleasant for you to reflect. I'll be a different yes. thought system. I'll yes. be a different set of movements. Mm-hmm. And at the end of it, we'll all be better. That's like the promise or the pledge. is like, yeah. if you follow me for a, a class or a comedy show, at the end, we'll feel better. I promise. And right. that's what, for me, makes it so offensive when I'm not doing well. Because <laughs> I'm like, I know this sounds like insanity, but I'm like, don't you know this is for us? Right. It's not just for me to be like, oh, I'm Captain Big Shit. I made them <laughs> laugh. But a, a hostile crowd does feel like you're trying to like steal from them. Mm. But really, what I'm trying to do is get us all to hold hands it's and dance around the Maypole. Yeah, comedy show is rallying <laughs> up yes. the the troops. I don't, you know, I don't. Every every time I go to comedy shows, it's, I always use war terms because that's all I know, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, you're rallying up. You know, it's like a battle cry. Like, hey, yeah. we're all weird. Aren't we? And yes. then they go like, oh my God, I am. You think that way? I think that way too. I feel so wild thinking that way. Yes. That's it's a I'm less alone. Yes. It's and you're being less alone. You're very it's good. It's being at that. less alone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you know. Yeah. Just your 
your physicality and what you're saying and just everything about you seems to be celebrating your meanness. And that mm. makes me feel mm. by osmosis. I'm like, wait, and I'm Pete. That's Otsuko. I'm Pete. Mm-hmm, cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, yeah, she yeah. She can be that. I'll be this. Right. We can all be each other. It, it really is kind of like a Dr. Seuss story. <laughs> like, hopefully. <laughs> yes, yeah. I'm and Dr. Seuss of, vibes. Yeah. You do have Seuss vibes. I think I'm like Seuss and Lil John vibes. Is do you know Lil John? Outcast? Lil John is, uh, I, he's, I, he's I the crazy? hype man that was like, yeah, come on, you know, in all the songs, right? In Outcast? No, no, Why not in Outcast. Why do I keep saying I keep insisting Little John. It's okay. Like, I was trying. I was trying to be like brush it over, but yeah, yeah. But I really since, shined a big spotlight on that. Not, I don't know Little John. <laughs> He's like a flavor flavor for this generation. Yeah, yeah. Even, uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Come on. Yeah. You just decided to let me off the hook. Well, I'm trying to think of did did uh, flavor flavor because I don't know his work as much besides like how he looked. Yeah. Did he? He's grown up. He's now flavor flavor. Oh, he's <laughs> <Just kidding>. he, <laughs> now that he's in his sixties. He's please. flavors flavor <laughs> PhD. <laughs> Did he did he like have songs or is Flavor Flav? Yeah. Flavor Flav. He was more energy. He was the hype man, kind of like okay. the little person that was in Kid Rock. Remember him? Oh, he, wow. I don't. Yeah. I always knew him as a singular artist. So. Well, there was, there was Kid <laughs> Rock and then there was an, uh, there's a, there's a joke to be made here. Let's let's let it go by. Uh-huh, there was uh-huh. a smaller person on stage with Got the it. rock, not yeah. the late one. Kid, okay. Kid Rock. Kid Rock. Not kid, and was that kid the rock Was Johnson. that Kid Kid Rock? Like so there's a smaller person. Yeah. What did he go by? If he the know, big guy is already Kid Rock. But he passed. I'm going to let us oh, know. Oh, wow. For the I riff. I okay. w- I'd want to know. We're going into a riff zone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Know who's, it's good. Who's it's, with us. Yes. So wow. he was kind of the Flavor Flav to Kid Rock. Flavor Flav did have one song that mm-hmm. I'm aware of called Cold Lampin'. And it was just about how he loved to relax. Like he loved to be lampin'. That's cool. And if you want to be cool to me, yeah. not to anyone else. I should listen If to I that. call you one day and you're like, what are you up to? You go, just lampin'. Hey. Nobody says it. Hey. Just keeping it cool. Just cold lampin'. I'll start lamping. And I if mean, you want to be cool to me, not everyone else, but just me, when I call you and I go, how are you feeling? How are you feeling, Pete? You're going to go, yeah. Because I'm like Lil John. Yeah. Because that's li- my flavor flavor. I understand. And but we're actually friends online. You and Lil John? Me and Lil John. Okay. Yes. That's a that's a big chasm you just jumped because the word online is, is, uh-huh. is like oh, the sorry. other side of the Grand Canyon. <laughs> You're like, we're friends no. online. Oh, he's on the other side of the Grand Canyon? <laughs> well, because we haven't met in person yet, but he but you... was he was even going to open my HBO special. Oh, really? Just be like, yeah, yeah, everybody, come on, on your feet now. You know? But he didn't? Uh, he, he couldn't make it in time to New York from Vegas, where he has a residency DJing these days. Okay. And yeah, to make it in time for the taping. But anyway... But you, so you we got into this type person. Huh? Talk to you talk to one another. We talk to each other. Say, we support each other. No, yeah. How did I get into the hype person energy? But tell me, tell me. Oh, what, that's what, my energy you, okay. on stage, Is hyping you, people up a little bit. I agree. Right, that's what you're it like is. a flavor flav. I'm yeah. Uh, or a yes, little yes, yeah. I'm your flavor flav, flavor flav, and Dr. Seuss. I don't think there's any <laughs> shame in acknowledging that that's certainly what I'm trying to do. What sucks though, not to mm-hmm. I, this isn't a leading question. What sucks sometimes my opener now these days yeah. is I go I'm in a funny mood, which is great because sometimes I'm not. Oh, uh huh. And you still have to do the job, right? And what sucks is when I'm trying to get a crowd into my energy, mm. and I realize there's actually some static in my energy. Meaning, maybe I'm a little stressed today. Maybe I'm a little underslept, underfed, whatever it may be. Yeah. I'm actually, like swirling them up into me, and I'm like, wait, I'm not. I'm not. I don't want to say clean, but I'm not running mm. as right. smoothly as I'd like to. I see what you mean. And then I realize I'm a hype man, but I'm not being as Pete Holmesy as I'd like to be. Does that ever happen to you? Yeah, for sure. But then you just sort of rest in the opposite energy. You just own it. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I'll just like me more, be more, be, I'm like, this is a more deadpan show. Oh, I love that. I just gotta, it, but it's still the same silliness. It's yeah. still the, you know. Because the words themselves will help you. They'll carry you into this. Yeah, yeah. The jokes themselves will still be the jokes. It's just like a more deadpan. Uh, what they're going to laugh about is the more, just like, that aspect, the silliness, the actual jokes. Right. You know, they won't get the full, like, dynamic aspect of it, but that's fine. That's I'll have right. To, yeah. 
I love hearing you say that because there are certain shows Val will be in the audience, for example. Yeah. And I'll be like, I just couldn't find myself in mm -hmm. the way that I want to. Yeah. And she was like, no one noticed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, right. And I just need, that's the best thing a partner can do is just go like, everyone was loving it. Like, yeah. Sometimes I'm just battling this idea of how it's, in fact, I'm often battling an idea of how it's supposed to be. Yeah. Instead of surrendering to what it is. Yeah. And not just on stage. I know. My life. And you're really battling your past performances. You're only seeing the past. Yeah. And you, so you, so it's like, it's, that's still a challenge for me. You have to like erase even the show you just did an hour ago. Yes. And try to like be right there and then. That's or right. else it's, yeah, you're, you're comparing yourself to a former you is like. That no one can find you. <laughs> you're going to just get upset while you're on stage. That's right. And <laughs> be over, like, that joke landed differently last time. Well, the, you're bringing up why I hate to do two shows in the same night. Oh, uh -huh. <laughs> I hate it because it's not because I could tell you, oh, my voice gets sore, my body sore, or whatever it is. Or I get confused, have I done this joke? It's not even that. It's just that every joke I do, yeah. even if it does exactly as well, I'm still going like, I'm like the pencil, like, same as last one, mm -hmm. better than last <laughs> one, worse than la the whole way through. Oh. And that is a, not always, yeah. but it takes all this conscious effort. Right. So sometimes I'll disrupt and I'll, I won't do my opener. I'll play that game. You ever play this game? Like try not to open for like, do your opening joke for as long as you can and just like fuck around. Oh, or, interesting. Or play or be a silly Billy. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, 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 yes. For sure. For yeah. sure. Because you're just like, I don't want to do the hit these things right now. Yeah. 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 You're just like, then, fuck it. Because yeah. You start to feel like a tra a door to door salesman. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with a door to door salesman, but. Yeah. But that raw energy is like, why? We got into it, yeah. right? Like that fun, keeping it fun for us is so important. Totally. Yeah. Which is funny because the raw energy that you're talking about is so like talking about you coming being right. late. Coming in, a little wild bit hair, different wow. hair than usual. Different DHTU. It's freeing. It is freeing. Does it to be like, oh, it's not a precise bowl cut. Right. No mistake seen anywhere. To, right. to like, oh, are, is there flyaways? I don't give a fuck, you know? That's, oh, by the way, that's how Lil John would say it. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. Like, I'm going to say that he's not the enunciated. only one that would say that. No, for sure. I've for heard, sure. Uh, lots of people just throwing that around. For sure. I'm obsessed, <laughs> obviously. Like, I, I think about him way too much, but especially, why? I don't know why I keep why referring are you to him. Why with a, with a hype man? Who is he the hype man for? Everybody. Just life? Yeah. He's life's hype man? Yeah. You know this too? Do you know that song that goes, shot, 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 shots, everybody. That's him too. Okay. So he's a music Sorry, we man. listen to different songs. I know we do. I don't listen to anything is my <laughs> problem. I listen to like dry lectures about God. <laughs> I'm like in my car just going. That's good. Profound. Right. Like, are you saved? Like, shot, shot, yeah. shot, 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 Everybody. Yes, because I'm constantly. I made it back to you, boys. Yes, I was. Yes, I. I you can't. Don't. Don't, don't I won't you, do it. Don't get derailed by me. I, yeah, I won't. I won't. I just I love I love music. Tell me everything. <laughs> no, so because I really think there are music people and then there are non-music people, and I I'm saying this the most honest thing I can say. Yeah. I envy. Yeah, we can talk about that. Okay. I envy the music people so hard. People who are like really into music. I'm you know not why? like that. I don't. I, I, okay. Yeah. Tell I was just saying a general. I like music because you know. Right. Most of us, all of us do. We do. But I'm not, I don't have records being like, oh, you, oh, you like so the sounds of. you file. No, no, right. no. But you love it. Yeah, I, I listen to like two types of music. That's it. What are they? Lil hip, John? Yeah, Lil hip -hop. John. So hip hop? Hip hop and But that would be like modern hip hop. You're not listening to old school. Yeah, and some might even say, Give he's a just shake. a Give voice. A okay. So we had that talk. Are you sponsored? Well, they are a sponsor, but it's because I love them. Oh, cool. So it started yeah. with love and then they sponsor. And then my friend developed it. But yeah, we had that talk. Look at you. you yeah. Know, that's called playing ball right there. I love that. Yeah. Magic I, mind. Yeah. It's <laughs> yes and. I'm very yes and. Hype energy. Yeah. I believe it. Do more. Stress less. But let me so tell you. you were saying, yeah. <laughs> yes, you hold it up like a commercial. It's, <laughs> I love it. We were, remember, we were upstairs at the improv uh -huh. and we had a talk about what we do before shows right well this is this is what i do before shows because it's it it has adaptogens to smooth out stress but a little bit of caffeine and a little bit of nootropic to help you think i guarantee that's you, awesome you're gonna love it yeah you drink it i'm gonna drink it Don't drink yeah because i'm telling you to because a lot of people just put it down 
Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, no, I am so curious. I was like, oh, I'm a little thirsty. Boom. What's this? <laughs> you know? And that's how you got me. <laughs> it's you really, knew we would get it's a, thirsty. A, a thirst quenching. Well, there's also water on the ground. Yeah. Oh, Oh wow, this is truly, this is truly tasty. And oh my God. And it really, it did hit. It kind of hit. Because... This is truly tasty. <laughs> Two camera. People that are just listening to this are like, what is happening? Well, she's literally I'm like ta- mugging out to the camera. I'm tasting yeah. a drink that... Well, just shoot it. It's like a shot. You yeah. don't have oh. to. No, can I take the tiny sips? I want, it, I want it to last. And so that would be awesome. <laughs> I'm a baby, Pete. Oh, so I'm different. I'm, I'm Dr. Seuss. Yes, yeah, strong energy eyes, too. clear eyes, can't lose. Yeah, that's right. That's me. <laughs> Like a baby. Oh, thank you for remembering. He You're quoted welcome. something I quoted that like I a, said before. I quoted a, <laughs> mm-hmm. the past. I'm only seeing the past. Mm-hmm. So we were saying, though, we're on a lot of things. We're on music. Yeah. Oh, we're, yeah, yeah. So where on are you on music? in the present. Do you have any opinions about yourself that you just don't like? This is one of them. Meaning okay. I'm at peace with it. Okay. But like... I'm married, you're married. Yeah. One of the things that I see Val see when we talk about the vulnerability of a relationship yeah. is I'm like, I'm going to let you in. Mm-hmm. I let a lot of people in with the podcast, but she yes. sees it. It's different from hearing someone talk about it. But what it is, is the opinion that I don't necessarily like about myself, but I've made my peace with is that I'm just not a music person. Oh, I don't throw it on and go like, are you fucking kidding me? I'm like, <laughs> it all pretty much sounds the same to me. I agree. Okay. Yeah. And what what is that? Oh, because you found the ones that don't aren't that way for you. You mean what do you mean? Like I you, tell me. So I don't most like anything with guitar. Yes. I'm like, oh yeah, it's like that. It's a guitar kind. song. I put it in the same category. Okay. It's a guitar song. If it's like hip hop dance hall, I might know a little bit more about. Yeah. But I'm not like turn turn dance hall on. I'm not like at a party being like, oh, you don't know good music. Like I think that tends to be, you know, what audiophiles you know, can be a little controlling. Uh, sorry. And, but you're saying music just kind of, you're not, you don't have like playlists, Pete's playlist well, for Monday, Tuesday, I'll tell, Wednesday. This, this is it. Okay. If you put, okay, so I love movies. Film. Uh-huh. I'm going to say I love film. Uh-huh. Film yeah. is, so I don't like photography either. I don't just go around and look at photography. Okay. It's yeah. not like I don't get it. Yeah. But film is, photography mm. and acting and, and comedy mm-hmm. and drama and music so i'm watching white lotus and i'll go jesus fuck this music is incredible right oh. but it's part of the experience when i go to a concert everyone's heard me say this before and they're just playing music i'm like it would be great if anything else was happening like i'm just i feel like an idiot just sitting there being like do, 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 which is why people are getting fucked up. Like they love drugs. They don't love music. They love drugs. They love getting drunk outside. Yeah. But just sitting there and being like, yeah, that doesn't mean I haven't had some great concerts. I have for sure. But for even sure. my favorite bands, I'm like, you know, yeah. I'd rather uh, hear this song in a great movie than I'd, than I'd really have something. Feels yeah. like part of the part of the pizza. It's not the full pizza. Yes, that's right. So these are like crust people, or you could say they're cheese people. They just love cheese. I'm like, I love cheese when it's on bread mm-hmm. with tomato sauce. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And that's a movie. Or that's life. Then there's great performers who know entertainers. I think there's like artists and then there's entertainers. Some are both. I hear you. And entertainers who get that about people. And so they're a musician, but they'll make sure to have multi dimensional aspects to their show. Agree. So there's film like the happening. Lips. Yes, the yes. flaming lips are coming out in a giant ball and uh, like rolling all over the audience and that sort of stuff. Spectacle. Yes, spectacle. Spectacle, yeah. yeah, or maybe even like a, a video that they've made or there's projections yes. and it's yes. part of, they interact with yes. it or something. Well, There's the, a story arc, the maybe. The National put out one of their, the National's my favorite band, they put mm-hmm. out one of their, their albums with a short film mm. that had all the, and it was a, a dancer, I looked at you because you're a dancer, who was pretending to be a baby and then pretending to be a toddler and it oh, had the music cool. going through it. Yeah. And then all the way through her death and you're watching it and you're just like, <laughs> like yeah. just absolutely devastated. I was like, that's what I'm talking about. Yes. Yes. But like, I, I love that album. I'll play it in the car. I play it constantly in the car and I like it, mm-hmm. but like, I love it. But the, I see other people loving it just on its own. The crust people. Yes. People just love crust. And I envy it. 
Because I'm like, these people are bringing their own internal cheese and tomato sauce into it. <laughs> and I can't be bothered. Yeah. I'm not that available. I, I can't find that in me so easily. I'll also say one last thing, and I really only want to hear from you. Is that like, <laughs> no, this is interesting to me because I <laughs> usually drive in silence and people are like, what? And I, uh, I don't have the words to describe what I'm feeling. And maybe this is it I about music. If I'm not listening to uh, a lecture or something like that, I love to drive in silence. Mm -hmm. And I also love to drive to instrumental. I listen to a lot of instrumental mm -hmm. post-rock kind of like stuff that's just sound that... Just like white noise. It's, it's, it's background. better than white noise. It's beautiful music, but it's, okay. it doesn't... I don't really... See, I don't like shot, 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 shot. It's like, why are you imposing your experience on me? Why is it Saturday night, 3 a.m. Uh -huh. in Vegas in my car? Because it's 11 a.m. and I'm trying to think about mm. what I would say to my dad in, in like mm. a moment of honesty or whatever it may be. Sure, sure. Or I'm trying to think nothing. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just trying to be still. What, I, I, what I'm, else sometimes got? I do need to get out of... Uh, I, I'm like, oh... I do like to think, and I'm always, I'm such a workaholic, I think. And so that's why silence, driving in silence doesn't matter because I'm usually like writing a joke or Out something. There. Yeah, writing a joke. I agree. And I never have thoughts about what to write to my dad or something because that's too <laughs> sad for me. So if I get into those feelings, <laughs> that's then I'll- shot, shot, shot. Shot, shot, shots, yeah. Yeah, the There's general. a general sad, a general sadness constantly around me, I think. I understand. Yeah, so I'm always trying Warning. to ride away. Yeah, huh? push it, or, keeping it. Run away. Yeah, I yeah. Really understand. That's why I listen to wild music or like beautiful dance hall music, yes. island sounds. Um, but you know, the national, it, it'll Too be sad. like, it, it. Yeah, it can be unless I'm. Me and my husband are in the car and going. Ah, oh, remember that one song by the national was great. We'll put it on and we'll have fun singing it. I wanna hurry home to you, and I'll be like, okay, that was a sad slow time. Show. Yeah, slow show, and then I'll have to turn it off. But yeah, it's it's I very. Tell yeah. me about the sadness only because I love it. If you don't like talking about it, let's not. Yeah, no, but no, I, no. I like, I, I'm looking to come down is a big part. You're looking to go up. Always, and always. I'm looking to go down. Interesting. Almost always. So you wake up, like, feel good like I that. I do wake up, feel good. Yeah. Old Holmes is running, like we were talking about Mike Birbiglia, like two drink Mike. I'm uh -huh. two coffee pee. <laughs> <laughs> like I wake up to coffee mm. and I, I'm, I'm already going. So like, that's why that's, I like yeah. Radiohead. Like I want to like lower frequencies, like get, get grounded, get earth, not oh, wow. black eyed peas. <laughs> well, well, tell me what, it, what, hey, it, you know, you know, songs. <laughs> I do not know songs. I just remember. Or you know from people from my time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Two questions. We're going to get into that sadness uh, for, because it's interesting. But is, is there anything that, as a married person, because mm -hmm. I told you I don't love that Val sees that I am not into music. Mm. Is there anything that sharing your life with somebody, you're like, get out of here. You're seeing this weird thing about me. <laughs> no, I want him to see everything. Right. I love being married. Like, I love having a best friend. You know, I'm, yeah. oh, I want him to know everything. Like I'll update him when I'm on the toilet, you know, Sure. because I just need him to know what I'm thinking. And I don't know if I, I, I don't have a therapist, but, and I, I think other people would probably be like, Hey, that's not healthy. Right. <laughs> Oh, what I'm you saying. You know, Val and I talk about this all the time. We're aware of codependency. Like, mm -hmm. I, I hear that. Mm -hmm. I guess the the question a therapist might ask is, what would it feel like if he wasn't there? You mm -hmm. know, it's nice to have him there, but is it is it like a need? Does it become a thing where like, mm -hmm. and is it him or is it somebody? Oh, that's interesting. The, that's the dangerous question. No, for sure. Yeah. yeah we yeah. don't even know. That, that, that got too real for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where I was like, oh, wow. Yeah. Oh. Um, Have you always been that way in your other relationships? Where I always... Where it's I, like, let's share everything? Oh, gosh. No, I guess not. Yeah, I wasn't like okay. that. Okay. And so I so think... So you found a special person? Yeah, it is him. And I love doing everything with him. And... Yeah, but I am like, hey, Otsuko, you know, you got to do some things on your own. You can go to some shows by yourself, you know. <laughs> You're not a like, solo person. Yeah, I go, like, he even comes to a lot of, uh, almost all my shows, even yeah. just spots around town. And, you know, yeah, um, I want to let him live too. But he's like, I also enjoy this. So right. what, what are we to do? We're obsessed with each other. And so there isn't, there isn't anything that, like, he sees that I can think of that I feel bad about because I'm like, Not yeah, that's about, me. But like, yeah, no, that's beautiful. And and don't 
misunderstand me. Yeah. I don't actually have shame. Right. But there's part of me that's kind of like, yeah, I, this, is, <laughs> this is odd. I uh-huh. watch the whole planet being like... <laughs> I don't even, I can't even do an impression of it, but they're like, have you heard the new Bieber song? I don't even know what they're saying. Uh-huh, and right. I'm in the corner going like, who <laughs> fucking cares? And Val has to, uh, she sees it. Mm-hmm. So is there anything that you're like, I know the world is like this, but look, you're my, you're my partner and you're going to see, I don't like this or I really like this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anything like that? Gosh. Uh, I guess what I'm asking, yeah. Oscar, it's, it's much simpler. Yeah. What's weird about you? <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. Um gosh, I mean, you know, I've been I I've always tried to be so normal <laughs> all my life. So Is that facts? Huh? Yeah. Don't we all want to be so normal? Yeah, but you're a funky chunky monkey. I know. I don't understand. <laughs> funky. You, like, I'm, I'm, you're a funky chunky. I'm green eggs and ham. Yeah, you are green eggs and ham. Oh uh, yeah. You're I know. When I say strange you understand this podcast is a celebration of weirdness. Yes, I do. Whole, and I, that's what I love. Yes. Yeah. But I don't understand. I don't see a. Did you used to not be the way you are right now? Because you look like yeah. you just went on safari <laughs> hunting hats. <laughs> like you just got and out the of wind a, a blew Jeep in, And I got a cute perm out of it. Yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> but haven't you always been not blending in with the group? Yeah, that's true. But. I thought that uh, sometimes, you know, there were time phases where I was like, I'll bleach my hair and I will wear. I'll bleach to fit in. Yeah, yeah, not to fit bleach in. to not fit in. Oh, to fit in, yeah. To look more Anglo Saxon. Yes, yeah. Really? And then it well, did that. Sounds kind of sad. It was kind of sad. It is sad. It's kind of opposite. It did the opposite because it highlighted my face even more. So I look. It was like, look at this Asian face even more. Oh my God, get so it out did of the here. opposite. Of, well, it was, it was, and it was. I couldn't bleach it blonde enough, so it was like orange. So I just stood out even more. Which is very. Which to is, me, that's Japanese punk rock right there. Uh huh. Like you bleach the hair, but it comes out orange. That but, looks cool to me. Oh, that's you're cool. Gonna, you're gonna have your suspenders around your. Oh yeah. And kind of like a leopard because I, I grew up loving punk so like the Japanese mm-hmm. punk scene that it's funny if people were into Japanese punk when you know I was trying to fit in in 2006 that would have been cool yeah I would have thought you were cool oh thanks let's, yeah let's go back in time and you can meet a young boy in a rayon shirt and acid wash jeans with wet hands who'd be like hey I see you I know what you're trying to do and I'm like thanks like <laughs> it wasn't an like, accident get out of here man boobs that's what you would have said no I'm just kidding no not at all I, I know, wanted I everyone to feel a part of something and yeah and so and you were trying to fit in with with were, was it a predominantly white school is, is, am I hearing you right no it's it was pretty diverse but okay. the the white, uh, the swimmers were the jocks and they happened to be white. And so it was just like, whoa, like they're so cool. And that's where all the money was put in. I feel like whoever the jocks are is where the school puts money into the most. Sure. So it's not, it's not always football. Right. It's not always cheerleading. I think that's a misconception. Yeah. You know, some schools it's a uh, lacrosse, like the DC high schools, lacrosse is where they put the money into. Sure. So it's like the rich people Follow who are able to. I was just going to say, well, swimming. A, yeah. The reason why a lot of people from the inner city are good at basketball is because there are basketball hoops in the inner city. Uh-huh. Not a lot of pools, not a lot of lacrosse fields. That's true. Not a lot of golf courses. Whoa. You know what I mean? So yeah. you're right. There's a status. Yes. Or not status. We attribute status to it, but there's money associated to this. Right, right. So and those end up being school, the cool people. I, I My school was the same way. I, I don't remember being in awe of the swim team, but it was like, <laughs> they're like, it is sort of magical. Like you spend like a third of your day in water. Like, I like, know. <laughs> like, I know. Like, yeah. Like a mythical creature. I know. They float. They're very sure of themselves. And they, Yes. And they're all wearing swimsuits and mm-hmm. not feeling weird about it. Yeah. Of course they were. But in my high school, I just assumed they were like, because in the yearbook, there's a <laughs> right. photo, there's a group photo of them all in their swimsuits. And I'm like, I'd rather die. Yeah. I'd rather die. Yeah. In fact, give me a one piece. <laughs> I'd like the cover. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're like, okay, self-assurance. <laughs> exactly. Oh. And where'd that come from? Yeah. And so I've never been asked, like, what makes me weird? I, I ask so many things. Yeah. I talk l- like this and like, like I have the, a weird the cadence. Style, you weird cadence? I have a weird cadence, which I, makes me more of a, I think, physical performer. But you, it's, 
you know, when I'm audio only, you can still tell everything I mean and my jokes and stuff. Sure. But I think watching me live does complete the performance because I do rely on both yeah. to talk. You're a movie you have to see in the theater. Yeah. What, when I, meaning it, it's not perfect as a record, unless you like to imagine, like imagine what she's doing that made that funny sure. just the sound. The, if you're able to do the, you know, uh, adding of the ketchup and stuff that you were talking about. That's right. Right. Or the marinara sauce and, yeah. the, right? The Some schools just bread. make pizza with ketchup. Uh -huh. For sure. <laughs> terrible, terrible schools. Well, when, I, when you and I did Largo together, you were telling me that, like, you're cold. Yes. Tell me that again. Yeah, I tell, have. Tell, reheat that anecdote for, for the show. No, I just thought it was so interesting because I was talking about how you're funnier because of how you move. Mm -hmm. And so many of us forget to move. Right, right. And, and you don't you said, and you don't need to move. But even if you're a deadpan performer, and then I said, I like to like use all of my body to perform, even when I'm just, yeah, from my toes, I put energy from my toes all the way to my ankles, all the way up my legs and all the way up my back. I make sure to talk from my stomach diaphragm. And then all of that gives me enough energy. And I was saying, I don't know if it's because I have uh, borderline anemia or what, but poor circulation. My acupuncturist says, you know, that to always keep my feet warm. But all of it helps me even not just stand while I'm performing, but just gives me the full potential, you know. Yeah. So it's there if I need it. You're like when plugged I'm performing. in at your feet. Yeah, and it even, goes all the way up. Even if I decide my performance isn't so quote unquote physical, if it's just gonna mostly be in the eyes, right? That's how I'm gonna deliver most of my punchlines or something. Um, I still need that full energy potential, like an anchor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who taught you this? Where did you learn this? I don't. Did you run into a, a magical rabbit in the forest? <laughs> I know. Was like, it sounds Come like. Come with me. Let's go it sounds to the like... <laughs> clear waters of movement. It sounds very like I'm magical. starting a cult or it, something. No, and I'm signing up because I'm like maybe I should be tapped into my, into my body, like embodied. I want to say it's some. It's rooted in, uh, theater a little bit. This Japanese theater. One of my roommates a few years ago was like a teacher in, I forget, Shimizu method, maybe, uh, where he always talked about feet a lot. Uh -huh. And, and then, what? There's a joke to make. Yeah, let's just keep going. Let's just keep going. He was, he was always me. talking about feet. He was into me. He kept no. saying, can I have pictures of your feet? I think he was just like a He loved guy. the culture. He loved Japan. <laughs> but he was, you know, his name was Cameron. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing weird about this dude at all. I think he just wanted to hook up with me. But, you know, it really hit me. I, I took, what I took away from it was, yeah. you know. You can learn from someone who has a crush on you. Yeah, totally. Yeah, they're very attentive. <laughs> yes, sure. they are. Okay, so this guy taught he you would, a lot about He would food. always, and then he would show me his training, and it would be, it would start with a lot of stomping and a lot of walking on tippy toes. So a lot of feet stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes, I do. And then, and then he would also have to perform lines while he's doing this and i was watching as uh you know really th there was just a, it was very energetic and i was like i wonder how that would be like if i try to translate into stand-up comedy mm. i don't know if it's That's like really a, interesting yeah school you had oh go ahead and i'm also a dancer so i know that all of that i think it's that's part of the somewhere some of where that knowledge comes from too yes yeah that's great yeah i i i'm not surprised that it informed one informed the other that the, that do you right. watch most stand-ups or that's a leading question <laughs> do you ever go like why aren't these people moving more because sometimes we're just heads on on uh -huh. stands and the stand is a body <laughs> but yeah but like that's a, a that but you know you got to do you that's your you you move around a little bit. I move a little bit. Yeah. I moved more once I moved to LA and the stages are bigger. In okay. New York, you're literally like standing on a cocktail table. Mm -hmm. and you're like, <laughs> yeah. you, you can't move here. Because it's flooding too. And yeah, so and you have flooding. to, you had to find higher ground. <laughs> I, I saw Mike, we were talking about Mike earlier. Mike did do that at one of the shows, in, like a city winery in New York or something, where it did start flooding. Really? And yeah, there was a leak in the ceiling or something. And so he was literally standing yeah. on... Uh, I don't know the picture why. you painted, I literally saw a New York comedian do. 
is what I'm saying. Uh huh. <laughs> I don't know why, but Mike is in in his core a comedian that should be standing on a table as the room floods. <laughs> yes, like it just feels right to me. He's accident prone. <laughs> He, and he would tell you the same. Yes. He's always, I've seen him just fall and trip on nothing so many times just <laughs> touring with him. I don't understand. Oh, I didn't know you toured with him. Yeah, I toured with him while I was on my own tour. So we, I would go back and forth. Wow. So it was like double the cities and it was really fun. And that's how we got really close as friends. Um, but yeah, he was he was always tripping yep. uh, and falling. He, I'd seen him fall backwards and a whole painting uh, like <laughs> fall. <laughs> And like strangers, like a priceless work of art. Falls. <laughs> yeah, He's Picasso. Like, uh-huh. Sorry about your Picasso. That's a great impression. Oh my God, you really truly Picasso. embodied him. <laughs> yeah, it yes, because yes. he's very physical. He is he very physical. Like that. He's like a C. He's like he a, is actually very physical, yeah. but like it's so wild because his delivery is also so calm. Yeah, you know when it comes to stand up, and then so. I yeah, think, I think about him all the time and how I could be more physical. Mm. I just think about him all the time as like a standard. I'm like, maybe the next special I do, I'll try and do it as well as Mike does it. I actually, <laughs> I prefer. I, I would say this to he, Mike is one of my dearest friends. We talk. He's the only friend I have that we talk at least once a week. Mm-hmm. And I was talking to him yesterday, and I would have said this to him. I do prefer my slapdash style. Mm-hmm, it's mm-hmm. not as predictable, and it's not as um, yes beautiful and there's a reason why it's not on broadway it's not consistent in that same way mm-hmm. uh and i love what mike is doing but there, there it's a conscious choice that sounds like i could do it but i'm not even trying to do it his way because i'd right. rather be a blub, a blubbering guy that's just like i don't know and like I, yeah I'm here that's for what minutes. you're known for that's exactly <laughs> being- no your, i agree that's so you yeah that's what i want to do yeah so even when i'm saying like oh maybe i could oh, tighten the laces and not that oh. mike's tight but like but be a beautiful precious stone that uh-huh. you know tom hanks comes and sure, whenever i talk to him sure. he's like telling me the amazing people that are there yeah like, yeah because you refined it and right. I'm over here being like, or oh, you can go in the corner of this bar and watch yeah. me be nuts. Like it's that. very different. It's, it's very, very different. different styles and yeah. it's very different, you know, stand up comedy the way you do it, the way I I do it. Yeah. Where do you fall? It seems like you fall closer to me, but you yeah. also I, I could see you doing I like arcs and so I try to reach one. You know, we all with do with the intruder and the yeah. story of the, yeah, there's a through line. Yeah. But we all do, even if it's like, you know, when you come up with an hour, it's a, it's coming from the same person. Yeah. So it'll always have an arc. I agree. It'll just be See, whatever, you know, uh, what is it called? Order. You order. Put the jokes in. I agree. It'll always make sense. See, I, I'm more of that get out of your own way. Meaning, if I tell you my dream last night, mm-hmm. I don't have to analyze it. Yeah. By virtue of it being my dream, you'll be like, I think Pete's mom was Santa mm-hmm. Claus. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, what I mean? like you'd, you'd, yes. or you'd be able to impose your own meaning on it. And, yeah. And so it's it's like a little bit. I, but I don't know why that made me laugh that so much because it's my mom being Santa. Claus. Yeah, I loved that image. Okay, Did, now I'm back. <laughs> I, have, I remember talking to your husband. I want to talk more about your husband, and I want to talk more about what makes you weird. Uh, but don't don't you have mom stuff? Uh huh. Yes, mom yeah. stuff. Uh-huh. <laughs> like mom issues. What's or? your mom? Yeah, mom uh, issues. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, what's going on there? Is this something you talk about? Yes. Yeah. My mom has schizophrenia, and yes. And doesn't your husband's mom uh, also have schizophrenia? Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we're twins. We're best friends. We. <laughs> it was very important to us go- that that was the thing in our significant other. No. But like, but, <laughs> okay. Can I say? Hmm. Wouldn't is it something you didn't know you wanted, but you, now that you have it, you're like, yeah. of course I would want someone who knows what it's like to have someone in their family that has schizophrenia, specifically sure. a mother. For sure, Tell for me. sure. Yeah, it's such a it was such a freak situation because I don't know how many people even what's the percentage of people that have that, and then what's the percentage of people that you know have that in common? Right, mom, mom, both moms. How did you guys meet? And then also you you're attracted to each other, right? I, th- Val and I talk about that all the time. <laughs> it's like, what are, because you have best friend, happy marriage, me uh-huh, too, best friend, uh-huh. happy marriage. What are the chances that the person who psychologically, spiritually, right. emotionally matches me absolutely perfect? And if we're being real and we laugh about this all the time, 
the reason we got together was hubba hubba. Yeah. I was like, hubba hubba. Uh huh. Like, what a fucking dingus. It's like the universe <laughs> was like, this is what he needs. Pour it in this and yeah. give it this and these big boobies and this and all that sort of I stuff. Know. And I'm like, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> and then it's like, psych. And it's we got just a gave mesh? you your partner. Yes. That's, it's no, so wild. When does wild. that happen? It's so wild. When does that happen? Never. Yeah. So I, you go. No, I no. know. I think about it all the time. Yeah, we talk about it all the time too. And so, yeah, uh, we, but you know, the commonality of both of us having moms with schizophrenia, we didn't realize till like our third date with each other. And so we were already having fun. It was like the hubba hubba, oh my gosh, yes. you're so hot. And oh wow, like we really banter well together and, you know, laugh, <laughs> laugh, 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 laugh. And then, you know, these are all important, right? People yeah. who have the same values, the same way of looking at the world and how they treat people, right? Yes. That it's like, it's, that's so I'm like, I don't, you did a dinner date when people are like, yeah, we just had dinner. It's like, it's so hard to tell. Uh, just someone being like, my favorite color is blue. And, oh, blue is warmest color. Speaking of, you know, like, I don't know how dates go. I mean, you love sexy, sexy, sexy <laughs> movies. I blue just, is the warmest color. That's, hey, that's blue is clues. I don't know. I don't know how dinner dates go. I understand what you're saying. It just feels like you don't get to uh, see them out and about in the world. Like, that's so important. Um. I just like, well, we met on a film shoot, so I got to see how he treats the crew and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, that's and, right. And, you know, and at work, I just feel like that shows a whole person more than, hey, you know, watching them struggle to cut steak in a dimly lit restaurant, which is, I feel like, <laughs> most dates, you and know? The, and the force sitting across from each other. My friend Oren, when I was dating, when I was single, he was like, yeah. don't don't go to dinner. Stop going to dinner. Yeah. It's too much pressure. It is. You're sitting across from them stiffly. Yeah. I talk about it in my act. I go like, how are you, brothers? <laughs> it's the same, same energy yeah. you're talking about. It's because it's like Zoom. It and is so like you're, Zoom. You're, you're a front-facing person suddenly. It's a fucking but Zoom. But we're a dynamic person with profiles and backs and, yes. you know. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's like. So you met him in the in the real world. This is a movie you were in? I was helping pro uh, my friend produce a, a film and he was acting in it. And so we met. And so it was cool because it's like there's work and all kinds of people yes. there. I got to see his talent Can at the I same also time. Say, yeah. Go ahead. At the same time. Mm -hmm. Don't you dare let me interrupt you at the same time. Yeah. You were saying at the same time. Oh, at the same time. No, no, no. At the same time. Yeah. Like the hubba hubba or yes, whatever. Yes, yes. Yeah. See, I'm glad we got that hubba hubba. Thank you. I think. <laughs> A lot of uh, our friends, wardrobe people, hair, makeup people, um, these are some of our closest friends. And there's a lot of uh, flirting. I'm talking about appropriate flirting. Mm -hmm. I'm not even, this has never been my style. I've never been like a, well, let me tell you, like, that's not my thing. Mm -hmm. Cigarette, martini, it's <laughs> 6 a.m. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> but there is a lot of relationships that form on set. Mm -hmm. And I think, see if you follow me here. Uh, not not intellectually, but if you agree with me, there's just a lot of creative energy. There's a lot of energy moving around. Yes, meaning, and I I, I don't, I'm not trying to be crass here, but like, there's something about creation that is sexual, oh. or you could say sex is creative. Meaning, yeah. I see why the lines get blurred. We're all on set. We're all making something, mm -hmm. and there's something about literally birthing a project, birthing a performance, birthing a moment, and we're all pointing to the same. There's something, it's not just sex, it's love. It, it's not yeah. just sex, it's love. Right, Sex right. is an aspect of it, but it's creativity, it's agreement. Yes. There's something about being in an environment where everyone's agreeing to do the same thing. Yeah. You're all flying under the same banner. Yeah. And in that beautiful, safe avatar village space, uh -huh. people fall in love. That's so true. Right? That's why, yes, that's why God made Adam and Eve naked. <laughs> you know, because he was in that energy, right? It's, sure. It's the creative energy. Everything's falling in place. That's you right. Know? A naked person is more like a tree. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Because a tree is naked. <laughs> yes. I put pants on my trees. You do. Yeah, yeah, when you I'm come glad. to my house, all the trees have pants on because I'm not a pervert. Oh, I'm glad. I yeah. put shirts on the girl ones. <laughs> the guy ones can be McConaughey. They're topless. <laughs> shirts on but the girl ones. <laughs> the girl ones. Yeah, because you want to be respectful. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Or at least a bra. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> Some of my trees have bras. What are what, they, yeah. <laughs> that is creativity, sexuality, love. What we often just 
cl- classify those as is like those positive life giving life force mm-hmm. emotions. Yes. And we don't have a lot of places where we're like that. Your shows right. are that way too. Of course he wants to come. Mm. Of course that I love Val comes. Mm. You see this like this right. alchemy. It's That's like there's a, true. the whole audience comes in like a swarm of bees and 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 we're and you're a bee too and you get it all going in a circle. Mm. And the bees are so happy and you're one of them and you just go around in a circle together. Yeah. That feels like the solar system. I know I sound yeah. insane. No, but no, the whole no, thing no. is just this sexy, sexy it's swirl. Very exciting. Yes. Yeah. And it's, gosh, yeah. How why don't more shows end in an orgy? <laughs> or or uh, mass marriage. <laughs> mass marriage. A mass marriage. Now stand up and turn to your left. And someone's like, why did he say to my right? My whole life is ruined. I fell in love with the person on my right. Now I'm marrying this guy. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I think any transference of energy can have a life affirming quality, mm-hmm. and those are places where people people's hearts open. Yes, because life is being affirmed, and creativity is life affirming. So I'm not surprised. Tell me how you met. Yes, so yes. You're, you're so that's him. how we met, and then we saw more of the real world. Who together. asked who out? We just, I think. Oh, I, I did. I, I oh. messaged him and just was full like boobs out. That no. was the, yeah. I sent him. You did not. I sent him a picture. I you yeah, did not that he didn't ask for. You need to tell me oh, everything that's true. I about was this like story. that. Yeah. You did not. Yeah, I just was like, hey, yeah, just like a picture of me without my my shirt on, like a tree, unlike your trees, unlike yeah. my trees. Mm-hmm. So, but you did ask him out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fun. Yeah, yes. And, and you then, went out while the f- production was still going? Because I just want to file this with HR. So just uh-huh. real- <laughs> No, of course. <laughs> yeah, no, it. yeah. Uh, it was still happening. Yeah. 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 Yes. And then we did. We went out. And then, you know, it was it was fun. Again. Oh, I think we just like immediately, I don't know, started hooking up or something. We weren't, we weren't like looking for a, a husband and wife. Yes. You know? Yes. Uh, so we were just trying to have fun. It was chasing fun feelings. Chasing Fun Feelings, your new book. Yeah, yes, yeah. it is. Val and I started casually. It was like it was like a casual thing, and then it was very evident right away that we were like, yeah, Hibley. Yeah. yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. was it like that in the past with other relationships? What that that you you just meet somebody and be it, looking for fun feelings and then end up dating them? Yeah, I suppose, but not like with Val. I'm not just trying to make it extra special. But that night, like I remember, yeah, it was very. We were very close right away. Okay. The first oh. night we met, for example, yeah, we were going out to drinks. We held hands. Oh, Isn't that cute? yeah, that is Let's very get the fuck cute. Out of here, we're yeah, just holding hands, and we held. Oh no, no, we held hands this way. Uh huh. As a joke. Not as oh, a joke. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> you are very okay. funny. Because like, it's not the, should, for those. Should just we describe it to the yeah. not intertwined? Right. Just like this, like you, like I hold my hand with my daughter. Like, like, like you're, uh, like, like, like you, like you, a child. <laughs> or yes, or when you've won something. No, no, that's not true. Like, like a would, handshake. Yes, like a. Is that what you it's, meant? Yeah, it's more like a handshake. It's yeah. like it's like a graduation handshake. Wow, that's amazing that you remember that. Well, I'm she, sure you commented on that. Up. She brings it. up. <laughs> she goes, "Remember when we met? You held my hand like this." And I'm like, "Will you lead it alone?" Lead it? <laughs> um, okay, wow. so you started hooking up, and then when did you have your uh oh feeling? Not uh oh, but like yeah, who boy? I think this is my special person. Oh yeah, I think I had a third date. Third date was when we were out. Oh, this is where mom, mom came in. Yeah, mom yeah. came in. Yeah, we found out that. You were saying, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, no, no, no. So I was over at his place and then we uh, were about to have sex again. And then. <laughs> For the second time that day? <laughs> no, Pete. We, we, <laughs> sorry, I thought we were, what you were saying. <laughs> oh no, sorry. Like for the just again in total, in general, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm yeah not, okay. I feel so, sorry. Oh, I'm so shy. <laughs> sorry. I, uh, if I'm showing any aggression, it's because I'm very insecure. But it's like I'm reading from my diary or something. And so I thought that's what you were saying. <laughs> we were in between bouts of sex. Yeah, I know. I'm just like showing off here. No, I wouldn't say like. Like that, like oh, you know, yo, we were all day, shot, 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 shot. everybody, 
I know that song. <laughs> Lil yes, John? You do. It Lil, is. Lil John. Yes. Like a hype man. He's like a flavor flavor. He's a residency in Vegas. <laughs> hey. Yeah, he's great. This is how you're going to, this is going to be your alibi. Exactly. One day. Like, what I have to pretend. You have enough information about Lil John that if you needed to be in Vegas, yes. he could be one of the things you were at. That's true. Mm-hmm. You always, if you're going to be a dishonest person, have <laughs> an in residency show in Vegas <laughs> in your back pocket. Because you can always be like, I was at Penn and Teller. Uh huh. And yes, you could have been. Right. It's a good alibi. Yeah. <laughs> I was at David Copperfield. That alibi has worked for 15 years. <laughs> that was a viable alibi. <laughs> okay. So you were about to do it. Yeah. And then he took a phone call from his mother, uh, which was wild. And I'd never seen anyone do that before. You know, not that like, I'm like the hottest person in the world, but I'm also like, hey, I'm like, um, I'm here. Can I say something weird? Yeah. Yeah. You know, there's a movie where this happens. Which movie? Love Actually. Oh my God. Again, please repaint I'm Love Actually <laughs> for me. That's what this is. This is a rewatch Love Actually yeah, because podcast. You're reminding me. I, again, I only remember the cards. <laughs> yes. Laura, is it Laura Linney? Yeah. Laura Linney uh-huh. has a schizophrenic brother. What? And she's about to have sex with the love of her life that she's been obsessed with and they're about to do it and her phone rings Whoa! and she answers it because it's her schizophrenic brother. Oh. Fucking what's happening, Hots? Oh my gosh, that's so wild. That's crazy. And then does she get to have finish? No, it's ruining her life. Oh no. That's the whole plot. In fact, I'm pretty sure, I've seen it every year, I should know. I'm pretty sure they don't get together. It's one of the sad ones. Oh my gosh. Right? It's one of the, they don't get together because she can't, he keeps, it's very movie schizophrenia, meaning uh-huh. I'd love to hear what it's actually like, uh-huh. but in the movie, it's very like... Schizophrenia, actually. <laughs> so dumb. You, Please don't. You've won. All your comments are going to no! go off. You just won a Peabody Award. <laughs> Yay, Yay, I've always wanted to yes! win this. And when I, oh, I want to shake the hands like you held your wife's hand there it that is. way. Surprisingly uh, cold. I, I think I'm dead. You're I'm, freezing. No, I'm very cold. Oh my gosh, I you know. need to use your toes. I know, please, your acupuncturist would be like, could you just light yourself on fire? Yeah, like warm your toes. Yeah, I know, I I'm really... very chilly, willy. So, schizophrenia actually, oh, but he's like, uh, my nurses are trying to kill me. There's a, I think there's a sniper on the roof. Okay. And he occasionally tries to hit her. It's a very sad part of the movie. Wow. Does that? Yeah. So he answered his mom. Yeah. For, because he, it was he, love actually. But he talked to, wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Yes. He talked to her for like an hour. Yeah. Like comforting her in ways and you're just that maybe like Laura Linney was circular doing. circular bed just waiting for her to come back. <laughs> yeah. I was baking. <laughs> I was, or I was being cooked in like a microwave. Yeah. Uh huh. Just spinning, basking in the and weird UV light that is, surrounded his room. Is but, this how you found out? Were you listening and like, this sounds like when I talked to my mom? Yes, yeah. The, shut was, shut up. Yeah, and I was like, oh, this is so interesting. Yeah, I wonder, well, she was distressed from something, you know. You I to. couldn't hear her voice, so I didn't know, but I was like, and then he started singing to her. And I was like, huh, I've done that. Like, shut, 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 yeah. shut, shut, shut. <laughs> yeah, he, like, Thank you, this calms me. He was like, hey, Jude, shut, 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 was shut, it really shut, hey, Jude? shut. Um, I think, why does he sing to her? I think it was Hey Jude. Yeah, the Beatles. It's it's actually, a uh, for listeners out there who are experiencing, Hey Jude is actually a very soothing song for folks with, you know, at least schizophrenia. It yeah, yeah, works yeah. for my mom too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Take with food and don't Take operate with food. heavy machinery <laughs> while listening to Hey Jude. That's right. It's I, medicine. I don't know what it is because then it just goes into na, 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 na. I don't know. It's just like a really I'm sweet song. I'm calmer having just remembered it. I think there's like a, um, like a what is it, ohm quality to it. I agree. Does that make the sense? The frequency and, and that's what the Beatles are all about. It's they like are. You realize that George Harrison song yes. just has Hare Krishna in the background. That's right. And we're all like, why is... Yeah. Like, but you don't, because you're just like, this is a great song. Uh-huh. And they're literally chanting Hare Krishna in the background. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, But okay. it calms you, yeah. So, by the way, you have to pitch this as a movie. This is an incredible movie. The sex, just the sex part? Just the sex part, yeah, like yeah. a hardcore adult film. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, I mean, I, no, where would it start? This scene is incredible. You meet oh. the love of your life. Uh-huh, uh-huh. 
Then you're about to do it. There's a great mm-hmm. scene. He takes a phone call for an hour. All right. And you're slowly and that's, and putting it And we show it in real time. <laughs> of course, most of the movie is the phone call. <laughs> and that's the whole budget is paying Paul McCartney for Hey Jude. That's the full budget. <laughs> that would be awesome. But like okay. watching you realize like, oh my God, this guy also has a schizophrenic parent. Is, right. How did you feel? What did What was going through your mind? Yeah, it was kind of... It's cool. It's like I saw his childhood, you know, it's like I immediately knew how he grew up too. Mm. And when I told him that that was my mother's situation, I feel like he felt the same way. Wow. And I was like, oh, everything clicked. Like, of course, we're making each other laugh. And we put levity first. And we uh, care about other people's feelings and, you know, are compassionate. And, you know, even remembering, like, when we went out to eat, like, him being bugged when someone was being shitty to a waiter. And I'm like, yeah, like, uh, you know, the human condition. You know, it's just like, it just made sense. Even just... Though we've only had like two dates before that. Wow. I was like, oh yeah, it's clicking because we were raised the same. A hypersensitive. It's almost like being that sensitive was a survival necessity. Yeah. 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 Let's let's talk more about this. We're in a right uh, sweet zone. Uh-huh. Speaking of magic mind, we're going to go to the mid rolls and we'll be back in two minutes. And I yes. want to keep talking about your husband and, and we'll get into some of this, the reality of, of parents with schizophrenia. Yeah. Very interesting. Okay. We'll be right back. Pardon the interruption, weirdos. For the water that Otsko and I are drinking, go to nirvanawatersciences.com and you can use promo code PETE20 for 20% off. It is incredible. Muscle recovery, like bodybuilding, body recovery water. Our sponsors today are BetterHelp. Today's show is brought to us by our friends at BetterHelp. When you're at your best, you can do great things. For those of you that have listened to this podcast for a long time, you know that talk therapy has literally changed and perhaps even saved my life, certainly saved the correction, the course correction that I needed uh, to live the best life that I could possibly live. And I'm a huge fan huge believer in talk therapy, but sometimes your life bogs you down. You may feel overwhelmed or uh, you're not showing up in the way that you want to, but talk therapy is here to help. As I always say, it is greater than the sum of its parts. It seems like you're just talking to somebody, but when that somebody is a trained licensed professional and they know how to guide and to nudge and to get you going deeper into better and better and more meaningful discoveries, It is a game changer and literally a life changer. And BetterHelp is here to make it so, so, so much easier. So if you're thinking of giving therapy a try, BetterHelp is a great option. It's convenient, flexible, affordable, and entirely online. Just fill out a brief questionnaire and get matched with a licensed therapist and switch. You can even switch therapists if you don't feel the vibe. Switch at no additional charge at any time. So you can feel more empowered, more balanced, and get everything sort of sorted and in its proper place, enabling you to have the 2023 that you want, that that give yourself that best foot forward by cleaning things up internally, which is where most things are happening, and do it with some help. If you want to live a more empowered life, therapy can help get you there. Visit betterhelp.com slash weirdo today to get 10% off your first month. That's better. H-E-L-P dot com slash weirdo. Show your support of the show. Show yourself some love. Show your brain some support. Show your emotions some support. And watch your work, your relationships, everything just in general flourish. That's what it did for me. And BetterHelp is here to make it so easy. No, no traffic. No weird waiting rooms. Nothing awkward. Just you and a therapist are so close Thanks to BetterHelp. Go to betterhelp.com slash weirdo for 10% off your first month. Also, we are brought to us by our friend Rocket Money, formerly known as Truebill. If your New Year's goals are to manage your budget better and to save money, you seriously need Rocket Money. It's the best way to hack your finances in the new year. Rocket Money, like I said, formerly known as Truebill, is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. I'm one of those people that I get a little paranoid. I get freaked out 
knowing, and it's facts, knowing that there are things that I signed up for, subscribed for, that I'm not using. Just these tiny, sometimes they're small, sometimes they're big, but let me tell you, they add up these un, these benign sort of splinter cell subscriptions that are somewhere deep in your finances that if you knew about them, you would get rid of them, but you don't know about them. And that's where Rocket Money is here to help. Over 80% of people have subscriptions they forgot about, 80%. That's like uh, that streaming service that you don't watch that you bought just to watch one show on. I know which one it was for me. And that free trial that they, they tricked you into that automatically recurs every 30 days, 30 days, but you're not even using it. Rocket Money will go in as your advocate, quickly and easily identify the subscriptions for you so you can stop paying for the ones you don't want. Rocket Money makes canceling subscriptions as easy as a click of a button. Simply find the, uh, the subscription that you're like, what the heck is that? That you don't recognize? Click cancel and Rocket Money will cancel it for you. No more long hold times with customer service or being tricked into staying on for some reason or tedious emailing back and forth. Companies typically aren't very responsive when you're trying to kick their butt to the curb, but Rocket Money takes care of that for you. Over 3 million people have used Rocket Money, saving the average person up to $720 a year. See, this is what I mean, it adds up. 720 bucks a year is the average savings with Rocket Money, so stop throwing your money away, cancel unwanted subscriptions, and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash weird. That's rocketmoney.com slash weird. Rocketmoney.com slash weird. That one had three times. I'm going to say four times just to rocketmoney.com slash weird. All right. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of this wonderful chat with Otsko. Get back into it. And we're literally right back. <laughs> hey. So don't 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 let that uh, take us off the rails here. This is very interesting. So when you are you were raised by your grandma though, mm -hmm. but when you have someone with schizophrenia in your life, not being attuned to other people's needs isn't really an option for you. Is that right? Is that yes. What you're yeah, yeah. Because you're just like. And that's where the general sadness for me comes from, because I just, whatever I'm doing, I get to be on stage, I get to, you know, spend every day, there's a chunk of my day where I'm just writing jokes for me to tell. This yeah. is my job, my yeah. career, my yeah. God, I get to have fun. And I'm touring and I'm meeting fans and I make fun videos with my husband, you know. At the end of the day, I always know there's in the back of my head that my mom doesn't get to do any of this, you know, and she's just in her room cooped up without friends, you know, hearing voices all day, she gets seizures three to four times a week, you know, and so she feels like a freak and she's lost all her teeth. And, mm. you know, like, that's why I have this general sadness, because I'm like, oh, gosh, I get to like have so much fun, you know, and, and so just always knowing that my mom was always suffering, even as a kid and stuff that that made me put, you know, it informed your gratitude. Is that it sounds like you're, yeah. you're more grateful because you know, so extremely, right, how it could have gone the other way. Yeah, I'm very grateful. And also, I just like, yeah, I, I really love people, you know, and I, I, I really want to meet people where they are and see them. And mm. my husband's like that, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you think that comes from the sensitivity that was sort of, I don't want to say imposed on you, but given to you, you're in the situation, almost like a superpower. It made you like these empathetic superheroes. Yeah. Yeah. Is that true? Don't let me put words. No, I think so. I think yeah. so. I mean, I, I would love to say I was born. I was born with it. Right. But, you know, I can't help but think it. it's it's from that. Seeing my mom, seeing my grandma also raise three, you know, I didn't see her raise three kids on her own, but she did. Yeah. And then she raised me too, you know, and uh -huh. she still takes care after my mom. Hmm. And I'm the next in line to do it. But, and all of that I'm so grateful for because I, I didn't have to, be the caretaker. My grandma at 87 is still taking care of her daughter. Wow. You know what I mean? So that I don't have to yet. Yeah. Gosh, like, yeah. Wow. I always feel a little guilty. Yeah. So I'm always like, shots, 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 shots. Shot. <laughs> oh, no. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do. I do. But guilty that you have it so good and your mom has it so bad? Is that? Is that... Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. A yeah. little guilty about that for sure. Because right. I got, you know, I get to needle jokes. You know what I mean? Well, it's funny because that's true. There's, we're talking about survivor's guilt, sort of. Oh, sure. And, oh, uh, interesting. There's survivor's guilt for everybody. Meaning, I, I was just talking to somebody where it was Berbiglia. 
Oh, uh huh. I was like, isn't it funny? We I talked to him yesterday too. I bet he was making the rounds. No, I called him. Oh, you did. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Okay, there we go. Oh, wow. Yeah. Hey, yeah. I wish he'd call me. Yeah. <laughs> camera. JK. We call each other. We were. It doesn't matter. But I, I I'm actually proud that I have a friend. Not yeah. just that it's a, fa- a famous friend, but men <laughs> do so poorly with friends. A, mm-hmm. a lot of men. A yeah. lot of women too. But like. I just never saw my dad be like, God, I love Jimmy. Like it's, <laughs> it's, it just never happened. I know. We have a once a week call where we check in on each uh, other. That would make me cry. What you're saying would make me cry if my dad uh-huh. was like, I just, I don't know what I would do if I didn't have the touchstone of Jimmy. <laughs> he just knows oh. me. It's, it's important to have somebody outside of your marriage, Peter. Like I would, I would die. Wow. Yeah. And I want to model that, not just model it to my daughter, but just do it for my fucking self. Right. But we were talking about survivor's guilt. So here we are, two guys. We don't have unhealthy uh, or unwell parents Mm -hmm. but you still go isn't it strange that you can be flying at such a high altitude and rarefied air special life meaning like you're saying we noodle with jokes Mm -hmm. we get to perform it's 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 a joy right and yet you'll go like there is a price which you'll happily pay but you go like fuck you see people in your family you see mm-hmm. other comedians mm-hmm. you see sometimes you I'll, I'll just be in a a waffle house in grand rapids michigan and mm-hmm. i'm just like fuck my face like Mm-mm. fuck my face mm-hmm. not i'm the king of the world and i'm a, it doesn't you don't have to be a fancy boy right. but if you're not struggling mm-hmm. in every element of your life you're <laughs> right. in a special place so yes. i'm not talking about celebrity here i'm just yeah. saying like if you're not if everything in your life isn't a fucking hassle, yeah, you have, you're a magical boy or girl. Yes, yeah, you have what you need. You have what you need. Yeah. Which is insane that that's special. Yeah, I know. In, I know. in America, that's like, America, the greatest country. And I'm like, most people are like, Jesus, like, I, know. I can barely keep this together. And I'm like you, I don't put on shot, shot, shots, uh-huh. but I'll watch some Frasier at night because I'm just like, you the need weight that. Of everything. Mm-hmm. And by the way, of course, there are people that are listening that are going through this and they're like, oh, boo-hoo, Pete, you have to know about me? That's not <laughs> what I'm saying. I'm yeah. saying we're all carrying this burden. Nobody gets off. Mm-hmm. E- even, I-, I can't speak for the the multi-billionaires, but I'm just saying like, we feel it because it's what's happening. Right, right. And we see it and we see each other's fragility. It reflects our own. I don't care if you have $100 million, you are in this moment, very vulnerable. Everybody is very, very vulnerable. Oh yeah, I and go. Yeah. I believe it. Yeah. yeah, and all every comedian has a point in their life where someone you came up with maybe goes, "Hey, it's me." Right. You know, and you go, "Wow, I still get to do it." You know, that's right. Yeah, and that, and that happened know, to me at Albertsons. What, hey, yes. it's me. Yes. Oh my god. Yes. We. Right, She's like, I don't do it anymore. I don't do stand up anymore. My mom fell on a stroke, and I had to go and take right. care of her. That's what she told me. Right. But I, I, I'm so proud of you. She said, you know, and I was like, God, like I still get to do it. You know, I'm yeah. just here picking up mac and cheese. She's, <laughs> she's, you know. Yeah. She's working there. Right, yeah. Right, right. And she's like, I couldn't do it. You know, I, I had to be there for my mom. And, and But I'm happy. You know, I, you know, I work here and I found the love of my life, you know, but it's just like, yeah. right? Like, you're like, oh God, like, you know, right? I'm sure people have been like, Pete, hey, remember? Sure. And then I flick a lit cigarette at <laughs> and I tell my driver to floor it because I'm talking <laughs> to the regulars. I'm talking to some normies back here, Jeeves. His name isn't Jeeves, but everyone who works for me, I call them Jeeves. Oh, amazing. Male, female. Uh-huh. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Hey, fucking Jeeves. Lady Jeeves. Get that bra higher on that tree. You think its boobs are up there? <laughs> it's up here. Dress my trees, Jeeves. <laughs> oh, my God. And no, but don't like, ever have the window rolled down when yes. some riffraff comes up on no, our car. No. Ever again. Never. And I don't even have windows. They're, they're cameras <laughs> that point out and I have an HD TV <laughs> that I can roll up or down. That's, and it plays outside. That's the only thing playing yes. all the time. And sometimes they just change to other places. Mm-hmm. I, go, I wish I was in Paris. <laughs> Boom, you're in Paris. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. That's unwell. It's tricky that's... because Jeeves on the windshield, he's looking at Paris too. So we've killed a lot of people. <laughs> He's just running over lots of people in LA, but we thought we were in Paris. You know what's wild? Some people would hear this and be like, that's my dream. 
That's like that's what I want to be, Pete. That's that's exactly what I, I want. A driver. I want it to be Jeeves. I want it to be like we kill people. We don't give a fuck. That's really. Some I, people I out of this whole you. episode, that's what they're gonna take away They'll from. Go, like I didn't know that. They'll that's be like, what that's I me. I watched a video of young Elon Musk on Instagram, and he was just getting delivery of a million dollar car. I uh-huh. thought it was a deep fake because he just looked like Ralph Wiggum, but with you know, <laughs> face. Wow. He, yeah. just look, he really looked like this bad blazer and mm-hmm. his hair looked terrible. But I it, know. You know, And I was like, that's a deep fake. It wasn't a deep fake. It was him. And he was like, wow, like three weeks ago, I was sleeping <laughs> in my car and now I have a million dollar car. <laughs> and I was going like, and you fucking aren't happy like i can wow. tell watching this video like mm. you're like here it is i can't believe it's super cool car <laughs> like, when right. we talk about this all the time on the pod but it's like we i talk about it all the time having your having your dreams come true and having you know your needs met isn't the key to happiness but i i want everyone to find that out for themselves i want yeah. their dreams to come true i want them to have the things that they need of course but i am there aren't any good examples of an Elon Musk or whoever mm-hmm. that just goes like, and you know, the, the emptiness came with me and <laughs> I got in the car, I drove around. Is this even his voice? I drove around and I, I just... I'm buying it. Yeah, I buy it too. Uh-huh. Because he's so not loved, it's like no one cares. <laughs> like if he was a beloved figure, I think right, they would right. be like, they'd wow. Be like, they'd be like, but hey. the, the Rise and Grind community doesn't like what this impression right now. <laughs> But like, there's not a lot. We don't even have to get into that. It's that. That's my sadness. Is I get really sad when I see people that like, even with mm. every privilege, are still just kind of like hungry ghosts, is what they're called in Buddhism. You know, he could be happy, and he, that's just he's yeah, not. He's right. not able to show emotion yeah, that's right. as well. Well, who the fuck am I? You know, that's absolutely true. Maybe that was that was like that's the most excited I sound this is the or most whatever. Excited you I know sound. what you sound a little a little Icelandic. I go up to Iceland twice a month to buy my cigarettes. <laughs> I love all your impressions. You have such range, no, Pete. You have you range. Do this, don't you, you do? do this, yeah, don't I can do this, only do Icelandic. <laughs> Icelandic. I think everyone everyone has an Icelandic. <laughs> Wait, you know, it's like Doctor Evil. <laughs> yeah, everybody has. <laughs> it it Icelandic. is. That's how I do it. And Icelanders hate it, and <laughs> if it is the only thing I have, how it's you, the one thing. How I did have. you find your Iceland? I think you just tighten your the back of your throat. I don't know. Maybe it's it's close to Japanese okay. a little bit. Do you speak Japanese? I do. Yeah. Oh, okay. Conversational. Yeah. I've lost a lot of the ability. You mean like no your ever- poetic Japanese? My, yes. You, can, you used to have some poetry in you. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yes, the poetic Japanese is gone. I I talk very like just succinct. You know, very second grade level. Just like give me this, give me that. Like I'm like a Russian. Well, I was just Russian say, actually, that's man. Kind of a Japanese stereotype that people would just be like clear oh, to the point. Yes, it's also right. German. It's also Russian. You're right, but there yeah. are certain cultures where it's not rude to uh-huh. just be like, "Give me eat this." Yes, eat yeah, this, please eat this now. Not, you know, yeah. I know that's broken English, <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, even in Japanese, it sounds yeah. very like yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not. A, it, it, well, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's not as flowery as we're like. Hey, y'all, we're gonna have our blooming <laughs> onion. Same restaurant in Japan. It's like I don't want to do the impression, but I actually right, really right. do. But I, <laughs> I don't want to get in, in trouble. But it's it's like you know, it's tight. Right. It's right, a little right, tighter. Right. Is that right? It's true. It's so true. I never even thought about that. I never thought what you just did with the hey y'all booming onion. It's very. I never musical. thought that that was flow flow it flowery. It's musical. It well, is. Westerners sing their words which is why when everybody sings they sound western wow. bono is like oh jeez i love playing bono and he's like <laughs> where the streets have no name like where's it go interesting we're all singing i did not know that i always wondered like yeah australians and people like that yeah. i don't understand un- until they're singing and yes. wow it goes away because we're singing all the time i thought it's because they all have the ability to talk like in an american english normal. accent normal <laughs> <laughs> Talk the I right way. All talk correctly. Talk the right way. I didn't know. I thought they always had the ability, but you know, we have a hard time trying to sound like Australians and British people and yes, stuff. of course. But they can it sound feels like, like us. an affection, an affectation to us. Like we're adding something. Mm. Val, what is the word for them? It's, it's taking it away. Right. Mm. To Val, told, Val's very good at helping me realize where I'm being short sighted. Ethnocentric or something. It, it's 
the assumption that your culture is yes. the baseline. Yes, 100%. And I, I caught myself doing, I had a bit. I was in Australia <laughs> and I was like, you guys realize you're talking wrong. Like you're talking <laughs> wrong. Like, right. no, you, and O is no, you, that's wrong. <laughs> yes. Like, and, and she, and they liked it because I think they're laughing at me basically. <laughs> but, right. Because uh, okay. they also know you're being like, you know, it's tongue in facetious. Cheek. I'm saying yeah. the thing I'm not supposed to. Say. Yeah, 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 yeah. But because I'm saying it, there's actually kind of something loving about that. Like, look at this dumb thought. Yeah, like. right. <laughs> so you're, uh, tell me a little bit more about the bond of the moms and the sadness. We got into survivor's guilt. Uh, and also, I, I don't know why I'm like, you're, you're going to, it's like a foregone conclusion that you'll take care of your mom. <laughs> oh, you mean like I have to do it? <laughs> I, don't, I don't. Yes, that is kind of what I'm saying. Because if yeah. you were my partner, yeah. I would be going like, are you sure? And it's not out of uncaring for your mother. Right, right. You have to have these conversations. That yeah. there isn't there. Well, I guess here's the question. Are you the best person to take care of your mother? I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, oh my God. Like, That's I'm, a question where we both know the answer. We're all worried. Yeah. We're all worried. My mom included. Like, her... <laughs> Everyone. My husband's like, you know, you can hire people. I will. I will. I will, of course, hire right, people. Right. That's why I'm working Hustling. so hard. So I yeah, can rise and grind. So I could get that. Elon Musk Instagram. Has yeah. My million dollar car. I want my million dollar car and yeah. my. But you wouldn't buy the million dollar car because you're like a million dollars will cover very good care for your mom. Yes. And then you can visit and, and would she be mad at you if you hired uh, a person to take care of her? Yes, for sure. Like so, she should like yell at you when you show up. She'd be like, well, you, who do you care? You pawned me off to <laughs> Charles over here. I don't know what would happen. I'm afraid, I'm afraid more of the depression. You that she'll get sad. She'll get sad. So she wants you to take care of her. She would rather be with family, of course. I would too. I get it. Right. So we have a, we have an ideal it? situation. <laughs> <laughs> really? If I were a pain in the butt, yeah. I would still be like, I want to be around family. Yeah, I've been in a pain. Yeah, I am a pain in the butt. But. See, my thought would be like, I, I'm i going to drag someone down. It might as well be someone I I made. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like it's like, this is going to be awful. It mm. might as well be somebody that I own. <laughs> like, these are, this is a difficult conversation to have. Yeah, I'm, wow, like, I'm, I'm interesting. Really to, no, I don't, have, I don't have it figured out. I don't right. even know the right questions to ask. No, I mean, it but depends on like, why you had a kid, right? Yeah, some people had a kid so that they could take insurance. care of them. Yes. When they're older. Is that, this is, I don't want to be ignorant, but is that more of an Eastern thing, do you think? I wonder, yeah, like, oh, yeah, they'll take care of me Lithuania, when I'm older. That's definitely going on. A yeah, bit. yeah, right. So they they kind of hope, like, hey, you're going to take care of me or, like, you know. Right. Or either it's that like or. till the fields. Lithuania was like, these these, mm. these little shits will till the fields with us. <laughs> till the they'll, fields. Uh, sit on the grain, keep it warm. Sorry, yeah, I had never heard that term before. Till the fields? I was like, what is yeah. that? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like mow the lawn. And by the time you need them, they're old enough to to shepherd you to your grave yes yeah that's what they hope and then and then you can procreate and and then bring c continue the name too right. right so it's very modern yeah two things that are very modern atheism that's that's not a uh, that's not shots fired it's a very modern phenomena yes that there is no god M yes most of recorded time it was just a foregone conclusion that you would have some belief mm -hmm. system mm -hmm. whether that's right or wrong it doesn't matter i'm just stating a fact two also very modern phenomenon. I, I am a incredibly 2022 person mm. that would say, I don't expect my daughter to take care of me. <laughs> like right. that's new. Yes, that is new. <laughs> very, new. very new. And yeah. if she tried to, I would say, unless I was desperate and absolutely, there was nobody to help, but I would be like, I would rather Charles <laughs> than you. Or I'm going to call Charles Schwab? Jeeves. Yeah, Charles, oh. let's, let's hope Charles Schwab takes care of me. <laughs> wink, wink, wink. No. Uh, Morgan Stanley, let, let be real. Um, just but like, uh, I, it would, and let's spin this back to you, but if, if my daughter were taking care of me, um, sure, there would be some comfort to that, but I think it would be eclipsed by the fact that I'd be like, you shouldn't be doing this. Oh, interesting. Like, I, I want you to live, live a good life. Mm -hmm. Like, and... 
this is a tough conversation. Yeah, no, no, but that's true. Like that's that is a modern way of thinking, and where we always needed to put a reason behind why we do something. Yeah, and maybe you don't like have right. to like. What do you, you mean just, by that? Oh, like I'm having a kid because. Of course, the right. family winter name coming. winter is coming. Yes, and yeah, these fields aren't going to tell themselves. Exactly, that sort of thing. and I think more and more you don't need a reason to have a kid. But I'm having a daughter, so she'll have. I, I'm literally Val and I are sun and water, and she's a plant. That's it. We're just trying to have her. My mom guilts me with this all the time. Like she's oh. like, why don't you come home for Christmas? And I'll be like, well, Christmas is about Leela, and we don't want to be traveling. And just being honest, like I, mm-hmm. I don't feel good as I'm telling her something I know she doesn't want to hear. Oh yeah. But she's like, wait till you, because she's guilting me. She, she'll stop herself, but she'll be like, wait till you see when Leela's older. And she and I'll go like, if Leela tells me I want to spend Christmas with my family because that makes me happy, yeah, nothing would make me happier. Wow. I'm not saying uh-huh. that I wouldn't be like a little rejected or whatever it is. Yes. But like, I want her to be happy more than I want myself to be happy. And like, oh, that's, yeah. that's tricky. And and may, maybe she's calling bullshit on that. She'll, she she would say, you'll see that's not how it works. You're actually, <laughs> you're going to be miserable. You'll be pissed. Yeah, you'll be pissed. Yeah. No, yeah, I know I would be. Already hearing this, I'd be like, oh no, I'd be so sad. So you, it, how does that inform your, because yeah. right now today as it stands, yeah. you're, uh, Papa, you have to take over. Uh huh. Yeah. You do that. What's your attitude towards doing that? That's water. Okay. Thank you. Has yeah. a little bit of orange in it. I'm gonna drink something because my my stomach is growling, and I was like, oh, that's gonna be so loud. Oh, that's and hilarious. maybe if I drink Can I get water. You a snack? No, no, no. I think no. People nobody love wants to. Chewing yeah, yeah nobody wants to hear We're that. We're almost done. We're almost yeah, done. Yeah. No, no, no. Here, let I'm me about open to... this for you. <laughs> you talk, thank you. you. Talk about uh, okay. How yeah. How do you feel going into that? Yeah, no, I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm such a blind optimist. I think it's, I can totally do it. And I have already an ideal situation that I've told my husband that I've convinced him to also think he agrees, you know, you know what I mean? Cause I've, you I've, inceptioned him. Yeah. I've said it enough where I'm like, it'll be good. It's going to be so fun. Right. Like for oh her to live God. in the guest house behind us. And we we can only you know I, I've said it like that where I'm like uh, you only have to see her like once a week I'll I'll go over there and you know it'll be so fun right like I I literally talk like that like a psychopath and and but that's what you're doing to yourself yeah that's true I I probably you're just need to hear him hear <laughs> the voice that you have going oh my god P I never thought of that this is why you drive quietly in the car because you're going like she'll be in the car it'll be good I'll see her, <laughs> see her like once or twice because and I'm not even making making fun of you i'm just saying these overwhelming wow. situations that's so true i'd never thought of that and then marriage is often and i do this with val you start to see the scripts that you're running yourself and now you have to say them out loud to another person because we need to be a unified front wow oh my gosh Crazy. yeah i i yeah i need a, to see a therapist <laughs> i i didn't know i was unwell <laughs> I thought I was just like, this, I don't, this was an optimist, <laughs> being an optimist. I don't think you're unwell. <laughs> well, you are dealing with something that needs to be dealt with. It, I, I'm over here. The issue of whether or not I go home for Christmas is not even an issue. Right. It's, it's like a, it's an You're fine with issue. it. Yes. Yeah. It's something I do for entertainment. And mm-hmm. even my mom does it for entertainment. Even the feeling of like, I wish is that the movie she gets to watch and my feeling of like, am I a bad son? That's the movie I get to watch. But like, we're not dealing with life and death and medical dependency. Right. That's true. Yeah. So. Yeah. But I am still going to be like, is it a cliche that you go to LA, you get an HBO special, you do your different you, you do your quibby. <laughs> <laughs> hey, go ahead. I, 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 your go. I knew those fighting words were going to be Take brought your up. <laughs> Take your shot. I didn't even know about it until I researched you for the book. Oh, yeah. But uh, quibby, um, it's just such a funny word. Anyway. It is. It is kind of a cliche, um, especially if you're an immigrant. Is that the mm-hmm, correct term? I never mm-hmm. know when it's emigrant. <laughs> emigrated. Oh, yeah. Emigrated. Yeah. The, did they used to say with an E I in the beginning? I still hear it. Yeah. You oh. listen to NPR and they're like, they emigrated. And I'm like, sorry, Ira. Oh, what does that <laughs> sorry, mean? Ira. What did, what did that mean? <laughs> yeah. They, they immigrated, but they were on ecstasy? I don't know. Everybody <laughs> got on board with that riff. It's fine. But anyway, so you're, especially an immigrant, You there's more heat on you coming to not just the West, but the West, West, LA, mm-hmm. Hollywood, mm-hmm. Right. your train comes in, you get 
uh, success, you get some money. Um, is the eye roll even greater if you were to hire Charles, one of my staff members, <laughs> St- uh, Jeeves, one of my Jeeveses, yeah. one of my many Je- disposable Jeeves. I would be honored if one of your staff members was like- Oh, I can explain like, the Jeeves. That's the whole pleasure of having a flock of Jeeves. Uh-huh, right. I'll just Dick Cheney one of them in the face. <laughs> too dark too dark they don't die it's, they it's don't duck they're like minions yeah they're minions yes exactly yes so you have your jeeves and you say jeeves take care of my mother everyone in the west would be like of course mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but is it is it safe to say that a lot of people would look at you uh cross probably you feel more heat because of the cliche-ness of like yeah someone comes to the west and becomes westernized yeah probably a little bit but I also, it's it's not even that that so much. It's it's me wanting to uh, do it because I maybe I don't want to feel the guilt. Maybe I'm you know because I I that general sadness will get greater if I knew that I put her somewhere else, right, or something. And what about sorry? Yeah, no, go what ahead. About a Jeeves that lives in your back house. Yeah, so it's great. still at your house. Uh huh. But you got a Jeeves back there. Yes, that's what I mean. Did we just fix it? Yes, so the ideal situation, there's a guest house, my mom's there, there's a Jeeves there. There's a Jeeves there. Yeah, so, and so we're a big it's family. Just, it's not like I and call gonna... you to do Largo and you're like, I can't, I, I, I'm completely, I'm a full-time oh, yeah. caregiver. Oh, yeah. That's we're... kind of what I thought you were saying. Yes. If I'm being honest, that you were going to oh, be a yeah. full-time caregiver. Oh, that you were like, oh. going like, to fade away. <laughs> oh, no, 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 I, no, 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 that would be too, too much. much. Yeah, okay. I would be, I w- yeah, I would be. So there'll be a Jeeves. There will be a Jeeves, yes. A but, blend. Yes, a blend. What a is fifty fifty modernism? Yes, modernism. modern t- twenty twenty two girl. That's how, what I am. How's mom gonna take that? Fine. She'll be great. Yeah, yeah, because then we can still have do the dinners. We could do breakfast together. Right. What is it like? Whoa, what is, it was just my pen. What is it like hanging out with your mom? Um, it's it's a it's a lot. It's probably like kind of like a kid, you know, just like needs, but what? maybe more like a. Oh gosh, maybe more like an infant, like a lot of needs, and then what are the needs? Oh, I'm thirsty. I'm hungry. I'm just saying. I, this is is this how babies are? Yeah. I I don't hang out with babies because I don't have one. But is she dependent? Because physically, is she incapable of? She she is uh, capable of like doing things, but she's just I think just with like, you know, uh, she just lays down a lot because the. She's just always, her medication makes her so sleepy. Yeah. So she is a little like, not a vegetable, but she, you know. She's dependent. She, she's dependent. Yeah, yeah. She she lays down a lot. She does, She can't stand for too long. So she likes to ask for things. You know, she sure. needs things. Sure. She sometimes can't make it to the restroom in time. So she wears diapers, stuff like that. Um, and so, yeah. And then, but then she, when she does talk when she gets to talking she loves the arts she's actually very very smart well versed in the arts she really? loves art history she knows how she she knows better than my grandma how jokes work and stuff really just because she watches a lot of tv so she'll watch variety shows with comedians on it and she knows you know she knows how jokes should be um are these like windows of clarity or like it, does it go come and go i, I really just yeah. don't know anything about this yeah so S- is schizophrenia she actually lucid, yeah. or is it like what's that schizophrenia actually yeah we're getting into schizophrenia, schizophrenia actually. exactly yeah. yeah yeah so are there pockets of lucidity or is it always just kind of like yeah. in an hour is it like Oh, she was clear for an hour. Yeah. Was it more like she was clear for 10 minutes and then she was unclear for whatever, yeah. you, whatever the term is? Yeah, it really depends on when the voices start coming in. Okay. Yeah. Does so, she know who the voices are? Yes. It's like seven people from her village back in Taiwan, uh, you know, but uh, and they say very negative things all day, all day. No, as, no good voice. No good voice. It's all about how she's failed as a person. And so, so it's just a lot. And so that's when she'll not be able to communicate because you know right. she's trying to fight them off right and so i'm not trying to be funny she is communicating she's communicating she to is them. no it's yeah. very true yeah. in she's, her reality yeah that's what's happening yes yeah. she's she is actually constantly constantly communicating, communicating and constantly yes. has uh i guess some people around her yeah, yes. yeah in a weird way yeah oh that's interesting yeah yeah because there is that is true to her. I, mm-hmm. I know that. The, I hope it that's is. Not it's true. Too yeah. disturbing, but it's no. like 
her mind would be making that very real to her. Yeah. I wish the voices were, yeah. uh, Kind. Yeah, yeah, totally. Right. But that's like a movie version. Right. That's a beautiful mind. Yes, is that it? yeah. Is that how that yeah, movie Paul goes? Bettany's I never like, watched it, but I was like, oh, this math problem. <laughs> like, so he's like a brilliant mathematician. Mean. Yeah, he's he's brilliant. They're actually in the way as well. The, oh, the voices, okay, okay. They, they end up being mean. In fact, I don't know too many nice voice stories, but it's interesting. Mm-hmm. As tempting as it may be to other your mom, isn't Eckhart Tolle has this great point where he's like, you see someone walking on the street, a homeless, unhoused person. Mm-hmm. Both homeless un- and unhoused to please everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you. No, no, no. I've got, I see what you did. Yeah, I see what you did. You started. I say it yeah. both ways. You say it both ways. Because I don't want to alienate the people that don't want to say unhoused. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I say both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you see somebody that does not have a home <laughs> that is walking around and they are yelling to themselves. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And Eckhart Tolle is like, what's the difference? They're just doing out loud what we're all doing. Right. Which is, which is true. Like, it's true. So as much as I'd like to scapegoat your mother and be like, I don't have, vo- of course I do. Mm-hmm. They're not audible in the way. This is, I, I think this is a very interesting subject. Yeah. I can hear a voice in my head. Oh, you can? It's my thoughts. So can Oh, you. yeah. Right. <laughs> I, I'm thirsty. I, uh-huh. I should drink something. And yeah. My stomach is grumbling. Yes. You heard those. Yes, yes, yes. That's normal. Right. That's... Like, or maybe all abnormal. <laughs> is, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Basic reality is an exercise in... I don't want to say insanity because of what we're talking about, but like... Um, you could say magic or you could yeah. say strangeness. Yeah. Why? Like... I can hear a voice that says, right now, Mm -hmm. as we're talking. Mm -hmm. Again, it's not really a voice because I'm not taking the time to articulate it. But it goes like, I bet we're about at a minute, an hour and 40 minutes. So we'll round, you know, like while we're talking. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's normal. I used to have a bit about this. I was like, it's crazy to hear voices in your head, but it's not crazy to hear songs in your head. So the rule in our (laughs) society is if you hear a voice that's crazy, unless it's singing, (laughs) if it's Sting singing Fields of Gold, you're not crazy. (laughs) And that to me, I think schizophrenia can be this harsh mirror that we're all living in Mm -hmm. a, a, a reality of our own making. Yeah. That yeah. we interpret that's completely normal to us. But if you were in my brain, I know this is very basic, like stoner thoughts. But you would, <laughs> no, you I love wouldn't it. know to ward off the occasional, you know, my mom floats by or my dad floats by. Right. Different voice. It's, it's significant that these are voices from her village in Taiwan where she grew up. Mm-hmm. These super ego, shaming, right. you know, thoughts. Yeah. We all have that. Yes. So I'm just trying to say. Yeah. Like, it's not that strange. Yeah. It's just, it's an exaggeration of what's already happening. I think so too, all the time. Yeah. We're at 90. Yeah. And sometimes, because it's an exaggeration. (laughs) Oh, nice. Because it's. 130, so it's 10 minutes. Oh, you were close. You were close. (laughs) Yeah. But you have to, we're constantly having multiple thoughts at the same time while we're always multitasking. Of course. And I always say, God, I should be, be careful, you know, because it is like. Uh, but back to really quick, her, it's her, it's just an exaggeration of how we all kind of, uh, move about in the world and think every day. Um, because of that, when she, like, when she has, um, sometimes she's been, I feel like a future teller. I feel like my mom has like psychic ability sometimes. Look, I'm this kind of person, but I'm not surprised if she's. If her reality is getting blurred, and I don't want to perpetuate some stereotype, if there's a stereotype that unwell people are magical, I don't, I don't want to do that. <laughs> no, no, but because she's able to tap into that's she spends so much time with just her thoughts. Yeah, that she's able to. She's trying to. She's she's warned me about things that I'm like I didn't see it because I was so busy with my own ego right, and walking right. around trying to make friends. I cared about what other people were thinking about me, while she didn't. You know, and. So so she was able to know the truth what faster. Did she warn you? I mean, it's just little things like dumb things that you'd no, be like, oh, no, uh, no. no, literally, she's like, the church, they're all hypocrites. And as a 10 year old, I was, I became such a Jesus freak because, you know, when you, they get immigrants very easily because they're like, do you want friends or not? Do you want to belong? Come to church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then I was like, yeah, I want friends. And then there was lunch too, it was free every Sunday. And everybody, you're right in my sweet spot. And everyone has to accept you and be nice to you. Right. Ideally. Yes. Yeah. You see this a lot. 
Yes. Yeah. So I went, my grandma, me, because uh, my uncle, who we were living in his garage of, uh, he was going to church. So we all went together. My mom would refuse to go. Uh, she, and and then every week she'd be like, you know, there's just, you know, they're, 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 they're people still, okay? Like, don't get too into them. Mm. You know, they're still people. So it's like, maybe the beliefs are good, but, you know, yeah, treat people kind, but are they actually doing that? Interesting. You know, and I was like, oh, they are, though, they are, though. And then, you know, uh, I started seeing things that... Um, she woke you up to... And she never even set foot on the church. She just knew because she just knows how people are. Anything. But I was a kid, so I my mind was blown. I was like, "How did you know? I saw them turn away a homeless, unhoused person who wanted <laughs> who wanted free lunch." <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. How'd you know? She's like, "Cause they're people. It's because they're people. Yeah. So they're gonna." Anything else? Any other time she saw? Um, I think she knew, <laughs> she knew COVID was going to hit the States too. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Pretty fast. But she also just watches a lot of like Asian news. So she just saw like the first cases with her, but she was like, she's like, it'll probably, we'll probably lock down by March. And I was like, no, I have comedy shows, mom. I'm going to do shows like all of March. Hilarious. She's like, mm, probably like. First week of March, we'll all be locked down. All of the states. Wow. And I was like, no, mom, you're wild. What are you talking about? We got good doctors and stuff. <laughs> Scientists and stuff. Right. They said it's just going to be a month. She's like, mm, it's going to be a while. She was right. She was right. Just because she's just with her thoughts and she watches patterns. Right. You know? That's interesting. Yeah. She's not trying to do comedy shows. Well, she doesn't have a narrative that she is deeply invested in maintaining. Yeah, yeah. yeah she's, as you and I do. She's not the center of her universe. Right. You literally have a tour schedule. It's, it's insanity that you I'm and thinking I about me. both have tour schedules because we're yeah. predicting where we'll be in the future. Uh huh. You know yes, I, mean? I know, which is like, wild. I'll be there on, like, do I you? know, again, it's totally normal. Yeah. But I'm like, after this, I'm going, there. I don't know that. No, I you know. know. I always no get knows. spooked. I'm like, oh, yeah, August 12th, I'm going to be there. But we also love it. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. Because then you're, you've basically made yourself God. You're like, I will be. Not, not in a big That's way. That's true, yeah. In a yeah. little way. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. not even in a bad way. I'm just saying it's this comforting thing to be like, uh, like you love being on the phone, being like, I, I have a flight. I, I'm, a, I, I'm on a flight to Philly. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're a soothsayer? You're yeah, you're like, yeah. You're predicting the future? You don't know that. <laughs> you don't know no, anything. that's so interesting. We might be, and that's what COVID was. Uh, obviously, I don't have to say this, but I will just to make sure everyone knows that I know. Huge tragedy. What a, what a devastating loss for humanity. A horrible thing. Mm -hmm. And there's this like lesson of like, we'll all be the people that had that happen. And there'll be just a little bit more glimmer in our eye when we're like, you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, you don't for know sure. What's happen. Like we, I thought it was going to be in Cleveland, mm -hmm. and it got everything got locked down. Right. Yeah. No Cleveland. Yeah. So you were a Jesus freak. I was a Jesus freak. I went to Jesus camp. I signed up on my own, even when my own youth group was like, "When we're not going this year," I'll be like, "Okay, I'll go on my own." To Join, Je to like Jesus a wild camp? person. Yeah, to Jesus camp, and I went. I went to Jesus camp. Yeah, where, where we watched that movie where they're holding up the called Jesus Camp. That it was movie. Called, <laughs> I think it's they they get straight to the point. You they know, do. they do. It's a documentary about Jesus Camp called mm -hmm. Jesus Camp. Yeah, that movie was difficult to watch. Yes, because you do see so much earnest desire for a connection mm -hmm. to a higher power and to purpose and to community. Right, and all of these other things are stapled to it. Like yeah. everyone you know is going to hell. Right. Uh, reproductive rights, if that's if that's a thing, that's that's definitely coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, homosexuality, all these things that you didn't ask for. Right. I'm projecting <laughs> onto you. I was like, I want a loving God. I want. I'm afraid of dying. I'd like that to be taken care of. I'd like some community. All this stuff, and then you get all that, and that's yes. there with the pizza and the youth group, and then <laughs> slowly, like you, you just start, and it's, it's a tragedy. Yeah. Nobody. Because that part didn't have to be a part of it. No. Yeah. But it, it ends up becoming a part of it. I'm trying to write a bit about this where I was like, Wow, yeah. We don't want mercy. We we, we hate mercy. <laughs> we don't want a God that loves everybody. We want a God that loves us and hates everybody else, just like us. Yeah, it's so true. Yeah. yeah. So tell me your experience before I keep going and on and on and on. No, it's so true. Stuff. <laughs> I mean, I was so entrenched, entrenched uh, what is it, entranced Entren by... Entranced or entrenched? Entrenched, yeah. entrenched, entranced. Everyone who's entrenched is entranced. Yeah. But not I'm, everyone who's entranced is entrenched. Is that right? Yeah. Very wow, few people I are entrenched. I learned so many words on this. 
<laughs> in this session alone. <laughs> this is your therapy session, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, no, we're, and yeah. we are on a couch. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, uh, <clears throat> Christians love a- a- outdoor activities. Sure. So there was a lot of that. So it was just like, oh, this is actual camp, you know, it was really... It was easy to get lost in that. We're playing capture the flag. Yeah. Uh, we're playing tag. Uh, we're painting murals and stuff. And then, uh, and then it gets really intense. The you know the main game that we were supposed to play that weekend was at night in the forest because so the camp happened in the forest of like Big Bear or something. So it was really dark, and you were supposed to put on backpacks with Bibles in it, and. Cross from one end of the forest. Cross. I'm 14. Yeah, cross. Uh huh. From one end of In the forest. In this camp, we only cross. We only cross. No zigzags. We never carry over. No. Yeah. No zigzags. <laughs> Everyone move in a lowercase t pattern. <laughs> no zigzags. That's for other for yeah. non-believers. For the Zen Buddhists. <laughs> <laughs> and so they were like, "There's gonna be the camp counselors are gonna be because they then they told this story about how like you know in China missionaries are going to prison being for being caught trying to spread the word of the Lord and and with they're getting caught with their Bibles and their backpacks when they're trying to cross the river to get to China or whatever. So that's the experience you all are going to feel tonight. Can I? (laughs) That's the experience you're all going to feel tonight? Yeah, so suddenly it always becomes scary, right? It's like Christian camp, capture the flag, tag, murals. and You became Chinese people smuggling Bibles across a river? Yes, so, yes, immediately we were all cosplaying you know, cross playing, cross playing. We were cross playing. We were oh, all no. playing. Yeah. Chinese. <laughs> yes. And yeah. So it was this and thing. And what happened if you got caught? If you got caught, they ask you one question. Do you believe in Jesus? If you say yes, you get fake killed, shot or whatever, and then put into, and then you go to heaven. But for uh, the holding spaces were like these sheds until in the end we can count who all said yes and end up in heaven. Who's saying no? People, uh, no, I don't believe in Jesus. The people, the kids who want to actually win the game and continue living and finish the- So if you say no, they leave you alone? They leave you alone, yeah. They leave you alone, and they go, yeah, okay, keep walking. And then you end up at the end of the forest where, you know, you have not been caught. But you walk with the guilt that you said, no, you don't believe in Jesus. And everyone knows because... I'm just curious. Isn't that wild? That's a wild game, right? Who doesn't see the switcheroo coming? Yeah, the whole camp is dedicated to believing in Jesus. They're like, so if you say no, you get to win the game. Everyone sees that like, psych, you're the loser. (laughs) Like, it's true. You can't. Yes, but you know when you're in a game of like pretty much tag, I get it. it. Hide and seek and tag. You're like, I want to win. I know. Do you love your mother? No. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're like a 12 year old boy. Win. Yeah. Yeah. So, what did you say? I said yes, like a loser. Died. Yeah, and I got fake shot. And I remember, I remember, I you, remember even being like, oh. Shooting you? <laughs> this is terrible. It's so frightening. I'm like so young, yes. pretty young, and 14. You, you were saying you remember. I remember when they fake shot me. I even like, I was so moved that I said yes and that I did something good, you know? And so, I remember even when they fake shot me me going oh like i did the physical movement of getting shot and fell backwards like a fucking loser like and then and then they go okay so now you're gonna get up they're like okay and they tap me hey so you're gonna get up and walk to the sheds so that's where you'll be held i was like okay thank you and like turned back into like instructions (laughs) oh my god it's so anyway so that's yeah, it's the scary stuff that they feed you to yeah, with sure. the games and. Well, that's there was that doc Hell House too, which is the make oh, a, yeah. a haunted house that was hell. And yeah, I was like, it's funny how we <laughs> will use uh, Christian gospel mm-hmm. to just do what everyone else is doing. Like we want to play a murder game. Yes, we want to play murder sneaky. It's so lame. I think it's the a, lamest. It, no, it's very lame. It's like we have this annoying guy Jesus who's just telling us to love each other. And be kind and to, you know, all that's good stuff. Yeah. But we still want to like 
can I shoot this 14 year old in the head? <laughs> and can we make a haunted house? Like, it's like having your cake and eating it too. It's like, yeah. we're, we're about love and light and forgiveness, but also like go in this haunted house <laughs> under the guise that it'll scare you into believing in my loving system. Right. Like, is that how you attract people with fear? <laughs> and is that, is that, would you like to go anywhere that fear brought you? That's a good question to ask. No, it I'm is. I'm here with fear. It's like Christian rap or something. It is. Where it's like, Oh, see, we still throw down beats. Right. You know? Shots, shots, shots. Cross, 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 cross. Everybody. Everybody. <laughs> what do you, where are you at now? Uh, I am I don't go to church. My, yeah, I don't go to church and I don't, I don't know if I'm a atheist. I just don't think about him. What's that? <laughs> What's that called? You are, that's a bit. <laughs> I don't know if I'm an atheist. I'm, I just don't think about him. What's I that don't. called? That's a bit that's ready to go. That's I don't. funny today. <laughs> it's like you were saying, you were saying somebody that you'd never think about too. Me? Flavor Flav? <laughs> oh, maybe it's Flavor Flav. You know, it's just like, I just, yeah, I don't, I don't think about him you when I wake up. Shelf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't mean to. Put him on a shelf? No, I didn't mean... Yeah, like an elf on a shelf, but it's yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Uh, so you're just kind of like taking a... It sounds like a much needed break. I feel like you put in your time getting headshots. Yeah, yeah. I got tired. I was like, oh man, I was a soldier for God. But do you have any inkling? Just today, we're both alive. Mm -hmm. We're both on a planet. Yeah. We both know it's not forever. That, right. I don't mean fear like afterlife. I just mean like... What, what, do you have any inkling on like what's going on here? Is it meaningless? Is it oh. meaningful? Is it? Yeah, I think we're all trying our best. And then, so that is meaningful. Yes. You know, we're all trying our best being in a place that we didn't really ask for, you know, and being in bodies we didn't really ask for. And so we're all trying our best considering. Yes. And that's again sort of the optimistic view I have, but I don't really think about where we go after at all. Do you think this? There's something. Do you think you are your body lights out dead when you get shot smuggling Bibles? <laughs> I think so too. You think it's over? Dead yeah, over? Yeah, I, I, I mean, I think that yes, yeah. Here, yeah, yeah, and you do too. Do I feel I? like didn't you? I feel like you had a bit about being atheist, and we're like the comedians are like atheists, and that's like the cigarette of beliefs. That's right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like the no. motorcycle of beliefs. <laughs> like to have nothing. Yeah. 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 Nothing. But we the got new nothing. one that I'm trying to get going that I just can't make that funny is like the reason why death is frightening to in a materialist, not necessarily an atheist, but atheist materialist perspective is that when you die you go into nothing mm -hmm. and that doesn't mean empty space that means the void it means you can't even imagine it mm -hmm. nothing but the same materialist worldview would tell you that the universe erupted from nothing so why are we so sure that it's the end if mm. all of the energy goes into the void and the void is the breeding ground for everything why can't you be the part of this undulating self-replicating and recycling energy that everything else is including your awareness and, and maybe even including your separateness mm. I, i'm not meaning even if you don't believe in god there's hope in that you believe the world count came out of nothing yes. and then when you die you go into nothing yeah which is at the end except when it's the beginning you understand yeah it's nothing except when it's everything and right. it became everything for no reason. So like for all you know, you die, you go into nothing. What a great place to be. It's yeah, the birthplace of I, infinite potential. I agree. I don't say that with uh, sadness at all. Yeah. Like, I would love that. To be nothing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm totally into it. Yeah. I'm not like, oh, I need a place to uh, be for, uh, not that. Yeah. People are going to be like, oh God, you think you're, we're such losers. No, it's just, it sounds wild to me sometimes. That's, yeah. I want to continue living forever and ever and sing and sing and, and sing stuff. Well, the like, idea that of sound, going, go Yeah, ahead. that's, that's wild. It's like, you know, we deserve rest. <laughs> it's okay. I, I The idea of going into... Again, words fail us here, but an afterlife, something that isn't being in these physical bodies, but that what I, what you and I were raised in places like Jesus Camp was that I, Pete, would know that I was in heaven and God was over there and I'm singing to him. Mm -hmm. That to me, I, I just think we need to, 
as as Father Greg Boyle would say, <laughs> wrong God. Like that's just the wrong. Like whoops, wrong God. Like that because one of the faults that I can have with any any religion that perpetuates the idea that you are a separated ego, that when it dies, that ego is judged and is either rewarded or punished, is so ego affirming and so mm. separateness affirming. Yeah. And whenever I look at spirituality and mysticism at its deeper levels, it's always pointing at it's one, it's one thing or it's no thing. Mm. And that's where we go. So I don't think you and I are going to be going like, remember on the podcast, like we're dead. Remember mm-hmm. on the podcast <laughs> when we talked about this? Isn't yeah. this weird? I know. And I don't think, because that's duality. I don't yeah. even think I'll be like, I'm jizzing because that <laughs> feeling is based in duality. Jizzing is defined by the feeling of not jizzing. Why, why do I have to pick jizzing? <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Wow, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Thomas Merton says, I don't know much about heaven, but there won't be much of you there. Right. So when we think about mm. it in ego terms, even being sent to hell is an ego trip. The the president of the universe hated me. What's more special than that? He couldn't fucking stand me. <laughs> he wanted to punish me. He was shaking his fist at me. That's an ego trip. Wow. That, yeah. That's just affirming your separateness. Wow. When, when yeah. really, and now we're in the. You must do better with trolls than me. Then. <laughs> if you're like, they're thinking about me. So that's nice. Well, <laughs> I would say all of that, and I use the term lightly, but victimness being like, this fucker posted that comment on this fuck you is another ego trip to be like i'm innocent and he's guilty and it's mm. a way of scapegoating my own guilt oh i interesting. would say it could be the guilt that came from separating from god this guilt that i shouldn't even be here that we're supposed to be what we're like fuck you, you oh know? yeah so we do like being victims to a certain extent i mean yes. all of us yeah for and we sure love being angry yeah and we love being right yeah and we love uh projecting all of our evil onto everyone else. And and we were even, I was even doing that earlier with Elon Musk. I'm like, oh, he has a sure. million dollar car. Yeah, Pete, you have a $400 toilet seat. Like, eat shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm, we can't mm-hmm. stop doing it. Right, right, because right. Because we either love being we innocent or be we the love good being one. guilty. Yeah. But it doesn't, or the bad one. Oh. I was driving here and I saw somebody on their back windshield. It said unholy. And I was like, yeah, we'll take it either way. <laughs> All we want is to exist and to know we exist and to know it's not our fault. Mm. So either we'll be guilty or we'll be innocent. But one thing we can't tolerate is being no thing, being nothing, being yeah. one with everything. And that's mercy and that's heaven. And that actually sounds like hell to us. We'd rather be here yeah. uh, farting and punching and right. occasionally eating. jizzing and eating. Yeah. Because <laughs> the idea of merging into God's or or the oneness of everything, we don't have to call it God, that actually sounds like hell to us. I think that's one of the problems we're here to overcome. Wow. Yeah. yeah. You and really, <laughs> I'm so glad you, you don't really listen do to music in your car like you, <laughs> because this is, this is, this, this is what you think about. Like, this is like really important stuff. Well, this is like important to think about. <laughs> I'm so glad you're not like taking it. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. But what uh, are we doing here? Yeah. We're merging. We love merging. Yeah. Remembering the oneness. That's why I'm asking you questions about yeah. what it felt like and the motive and how you feel about your mother. Unifying feels so good. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. A comedy show is is spiritual. It's this unifying thing. Right. And that troll is separating. All these things that we hate are, are, are these separations, these rude awakenings. Yeah. From a, we could be having a better dream. Right. No, it's true. The end. Wow. Then Amazing. Do I ring a bell? <laughs> no, I don't know. I do. Uh, hey, Jude. I feel like you sing a song. Na, 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 na. Right? I feel like. Here's what we do. Very dangerous. You can, <laughs> like, talking like that, if there were three, like, one more person. Boom. That's how a cult starts. <laughs> like, for real. <laughs> That's why we only have Katie. Uh, there are some podcasts where there are people manning the cameras and stuff. Yeah. We don't do that. Oh, my God. Because, like, you know, we're wearing sashes. Yeah, because I'll be like, we want to be something, not no thing. <laughs> and that's, like, also, yeah. No, it's so what true. Fun. You're really fun. Okay, this is what we do. Because yeah. this happens... Most episodes, they'll be like this. Well, what do we do now? We just, we do these questions. Can you tell me? First of all, do you feel satisfied? Is there anything else you wanted to say about that? No, topic? I feel great. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
Can you tell me a time in your life that you laughed really, 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 really hard? And it doesn't have to be a good story. Yeah. I oh, So I really love this show called Cobra Kai. Sure. And I don't know if you've seen it, but it's like season three. I I love it for many reasons. You know, it's like... I've never like, heard anyone love it. Really? People love it? I love it. I don't mean it like that. Katie, do people I didn't say people. Kai? It, that's perfect. I didn't I say just, people. Okay. I like yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But is it a kitschy love or like you just like what they're doing, I receive it. Yeah, they're so committed. They they they're so sincere about that and storytelling. So, so well, even if it's cheesy, the stakes are high for them. But when you watch it, you're not watching it like ironically this is silly or something oh no i never you just do love that cobra kai. i'm only saying it because it's called cobra kai that's really all i like it's a karate kid spinoff yes okay yeah and that's it's... why i was assuming maybe it was corny but i don't know anything about no it, it is corny okay. but because they the actors believe they're in it they're in it the the karate in the valley like the all valley tournament that's like very important <laughs> I know it sounds so silly, no, it and doesn't. it is silly. No, no, it no. is silly. It's and, all in all Valley Karate. But that, that that it's such a big deal to them, yes. and that's why I love it. Yes. And Johnny Lawrence, who is a character in Karate Kid, he was the main antagonist. I love that he co- has a comeback, you know, and he yeah. gets to, you know, I think is he a bad guy still. He's uh, he's sort of he's like a bad guy, but his true self is good, and yeah. but he's not so smart, you know. He he likes beer and uh, I bought this painting because I thought I'm supposed to look make it look nice to impress this girl. He's like that, and he <laughs> I love this. and he's trying to connect with the son of his girlfriend, you know. And he loves and he, he wants to be his father figure. So he's telling him, I genuine sincerely, I want I wanted to t- take you somewhere nice, um, and I'm not gonna crush this because the delivery is so good it's the way he says this he sure. says i wanted to take you somewhere nice marie calendars applebee's olive garden stuff like that and it <laughs> kills me it killed me and i i've rewatched it for like so many times and he's sincere about it he sits him down to tell him this <gasps> and he really means it and it crush, kills me yes i wanted to take you somewhere nice marie calendars applebee's olive garden Stuff like that. That is a great answer. Yeah, so that's that's what makes me laugh. Do you love laugh. it because it's kind of, it's heartwarming too? It's heartwarming. It's both. It's funny, but it's also, it's funny that it's not funny and he means it and it's beautiful. Yes. And, see, this is you. It's like you 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 have all this beauty and all this empathy in you that even you're funny. Like so many people on the show, it's like, I saw someone fall face first <laughs> in a fountain. And you're like, I saw a dad trying to connect with his son. And his <laughs> example of somewhere nice was Olive Garden. And that's still pretty funny. Yeah. And he, yes. And he sincerely meant it, yes, though. Yes. And he really know? meant it. And stuff like that. It's like, et cetera. And stuff like that. Like he, you know, <laughs> and stuff like that is really what killed me. I can't believe et cetera made it. It's killing it. The first person that said et cetera. Yeah. You know, et cetera. Yeah. What the fuck was that? Something we'll all say for the rest of recording. Yeah, time. and then some other dork was like, we need something different for people. They're like, et all. At all. At all is for people. Dude, I never isn't even it? got that et cetera and at all. Yeah, I you're think right. at, for all. Yeah. Yeah, at all. <laughs> Oh, God. And writ large comes to mind. <laughs> this is grammar. Writ, it's not grammar, but you understand. Atska, this was awesome. This this was awesome. Did you enjoy? I did. Thank you so I'm much so for having were, me. Are you kidding? Thank you for the, the drinks. Yes, of course. Oh, my God. It was, yeah. Every oh, time Nirvana I, water. That's also a sponsor. This, yeah, the, the, the helps, water is so tasty. It's so Nirvana delicious. Nirvana water. And it prevents muscle loss. That's, and I think it speeds up your metabolism. It says it on the side. Read it there. Oh, just kidding, you don't have to read no, it. No, it does. That, that's why I'm. That's why I'm starving. <laughs> I'm just losing weight so quick. I'm just losing weight. Yeah, you're sitting you're, here. You're wasting away, and that's what that oh water was designed for. People that waste away. Um, thank you very much. We end with the guest saying the catchphrase, which is "Keep it crispy." It's just how we sign off. If yeah. you would say "Keep it crispy," then then we'll be done. Let's do it. Keep it crispy. <laughs> <laughs> you do have a special way of talking like sometimes people do super cuts of all the keep it crispies uh-huh. we'll all know that was you <laughs> well done you thanks for having me you made it